dreams are dealt every day at the World Series of Poker. In 2003, the World Series dealt him a dream. Chris Moneymaker is atop the poker world. This is beyond fairy tale. It's inconceivable. Chris Moneymaker gave every amateur hope that a main event bracelet was possible. All that pressure and seven grueling days of poker play is finally over. Ten years ago, the former accountant navigated a field of 839. This year's champion must find his or her way through 6,352 players. This is prime time right here in the United States, Las Vegas. This is the big bad boy. The main event is the best thing in poker. Poker takes the spotlight globally. The main event is euphoria, it's utopia, it's where you want to be. This is a tournament for everyone, and everyone is here. Pros, amateurs, dreamers, perhaps the next Chris Moneymaker. A dream begins tonight, here at the World Series of Poker main event. Texas Dolly Brunson, who wrote the book. He's moving in for the kill. And there it is. Helmut wins the championship. Moneymaker puts his name amongst the greatest players in the game. Wake me now. Greg Merson is the main event champion. Biggest day of my life. Main event, day three. This is it, the tournament everyone in the poker world circles on the calendar. Welcome to day three of the 2013 World Series of Poker main event. Andy. Hi everybody, Lon McCarron along with Norman Chad and Kara Scott from the Rio where current chip leader Mark Kroon is chatting with Norwegian poker pro Annette Oberstad. If I'm the chip leader after this day, there's no stopping me. We're an hour and a half from both going for lunch. That's where we're at. <laughs> How you feeling, Let's go. I don't know. I'm wearing a diaper, so you tell me. <laughs> the defending champ is here. Greg Merson, part of the day three action. Nothing better than walking to the main event and seeing your larger-than-life image staring down at you at the entrance. Among the throng is the poker brat looking for his 100th career World Series cash. Phil Helmuth, the 1989 world champ tweeting his followers that he just ran to somebody famous who knows him. Former Survivor contestant Jean Robert Balland is stacked. He actually talks to the table more than the poker brat, and it's not always constructive conversation. Over at the secondary table, the legend, Doyle Brunson, making his presence felt on the felt. He does not have to say a word, and you know poker royalty is in the house. The legendary trash talker, Sean Chacon, has an above average stack. What he does, Lon, isn't trash talking, it's waste disposal talking. <laughs> Madison, Wisconsin's Mark Cruz the only player over a half million. A little earlier, Kara Scott caught up with an amateur playing his first main event in the most difficult of conditions. Day three of the main event is about to start and there are a lot of players out there who want to be in the shoes of this man. This is Willie Horton. He still has chips and a shot at the title and the money. However, your position at the table you're going into is not so good. Tell me about this. Um, I'm sitting next to Phil Ivey, one of the best poker players in the world, one of my idols, and I'm super nervous right now. And in, in terms of your chip stack as well, a little bit low on chips? I'm very low, but I'm confident I can get back up there. Play smart and play my position and play aggressive and I'll be fine. Now you are also going to be sitting at a feature table, so does that worry you at all? Does that kind of add a little extra nerves to the situation? Uh, yeah, a lot of extra nerves, but I, I'll be all right once it started going. Well, good luck out there. Thank you. Thank you, Kara. Nice fella, should be knocked out within the hour. No huge stacks at the table, but six players above average. One of them, Nebraskan Phil Mater. On Mater's right is the reason this table is featured. Nine-time bracelet winner, Phil Ivey. I pick him to win it every year. He's gone close three times in the last decade, but close don't feed the bulldog. You're either a champ or a chump. Do it, Phil. I only live once, give it a whip, and I'm like, oh, what's that? This is, this is rough. A16, right? Just a long time, man. Park. Yeah, which is, it is. It is. It is. Like I said, it, like my. It gets longer now, though, if you keep going, right? Like, no more breaks. Yeah, but like my first, like we played Sunday, I got done, I was like, oh. Right in my room, we just crashed and burned. Just, this is tough. You played anything else or just the main? No, I just played the main event. I, just I went and played time. after that. Huh? I went and played more poker after that. You serious? Yeah, he's serious. He's Phil Ivey. He plays poker at traffic lights. <laughs> 
<laughs> Willie speaks the truth. This event will grind you down. Four chips in play right now. The blinds at eight and 1600. Action on Ola Lua Okilola, software engineer with Ace 10 off. He gave us a great gift, Norman. He says, just call me Ola. That we will. And a raise to 3,500. This is the eighth straight time the main event field has exceeded 6,000 entrants. These players have already made it through two long days of play. The average stack right now, about 109,000. Folded to Phil Ivey on the button with pocket sevens. Ivey 10th in the 2003 main event, 7th in the 09 main event. Just won his ninth bracelet at World Series Asia Pacific. To the big blind, a farmer from Nebraska, Phil Mater, 6-5 off, and he makes the call. So it will be the farmer, the engineer, and Phil Ivey. Welcome to the main event. The flop 4-5-8, a pair of fives with a gut shot for Mater. And he checks to Ola with two overcards. Ola once interned at Microsoft and Google, now works for Facebook. Think he could fix the pop-ups I keep getting? <laughs> he continues with a bet of 6,200. Ivy's still ahead. He picked up a gut shot, too. Phil regards his two amateurs at this table. Sixty two hundred in his hand and he calls. Mater knows he's beat and gives it up. Good lay down from the farmer. So now it's the engineer versus Phil Ivy. Heads up. Queen of Clubs on the turn, both with a flush draw. Ola's is higher. Ola wondering if he wants to continue to try and outplay Ivy out of position. Check. He checks. Ivy with the second biggest stack at this table. Check. Checks as well. All players check. River card. King of Spades misses Ola. He's left with ace high. Check. And he checks Check. again. Down, Ivy right. checks back, and Ivy will be All pleased to take the pot eight. with sevens. Error-free poker there from Phil Ivy. That's what I'm always preaching to him. 214,000 plus Ivy with the most chips at this table. Ola wondering if maybe a Turner River bet could have ended the hand in his favor. Is this anybody's first World Series besides me? We're not talking to you, Phil. We're not talking to you. We're not. Never seen that guy for in my life. See this dot com? <laughs> 11 years of the World Series of Poker main event with you, Norman Chad, and it feels like so often we start the season talking about the same three things. How many players have entered the main event? The chance of an unknown making a deep run, and of course, your favorite player, Phil Ivey. 11 years together, Lon, and I am stoked! <laughs> I know they tried to fire you after the first year, and they've tried to fire me every year since, but we have learned how to play a short stack. And my main man, Phil Ivey, he can play any stack, anytime, anywhere, anyhow, anyway, against anybody. Good luck, Willie Horton. You've got the worst seat in the house. Me and Lon have the best seats, because Phil Ivey can't raise us from where we're sitting. What a long way he's come from his no-home Jerome days as an underage poker player in Atlantic City, Phil Ivey. All right, over to our secondary table. Look who holds a lot of chips. Texas Dolly himself, nearly 213,000 for Doyle Brunson, and he can still rock the hat. The under-the-gun player here, Pavel Zavadovich, an IT worker from Poland with pocket aces, has raised it up to 3,500. You see Doyle Brunson get rid of it in middle position. Ciro Zuccarello with a six folds as well. But they got you, they got your statue right there next to the moneymaker. How do you feel about that, honestly? Uh, I want to hear your thoughts. Texas Dolly not as chatty as Sheiky. I don't want to see your gestures. I want to see your thoughts. <laughs> I want to hear your thoughts. Everybody says it looks like Ford Park. <laughs> I don't know what the hell. And the big I blind, mean, another software engineer, Alan Whelan from Spokane. Oh, you? Yeah. Where is he at? I don't know. He, he has a lot of... He could, he could play, right? Alan gets the big blind discount and will take a flop. That was your like, main dude, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. that, was like, that, was, that was like... Flop 10. Guy. Jack, Jack. What a flop for Whelan as his Jack's full grabs a 10 to 1 advantage. They both check. The ace is in trouble. Turn card is an ace. Oh, the cruelty. Zavadovich turns a bigger boat. Whelan checks. This hand is a cruel experiment in human behavior. It just isn't fair. Zavadovich reaching for chips now. 4,500. Whelan doubled through Doyle Brunson on day two with a straight flush. He's in danger of seeing all those chips disappear right here. Whelan flopping jacks full. 4, 500. But then his Polish counterpart came back with a big left hook on the turn. And just a call. 
He is slow playing his full house again. River card now. Four of clubs. Let's see if Whelan is up to a bet here. Yeah, he's been waiting for this moment. Over half the pot, 10,006. Only two hands would beat Wheeland. Ace-Ace or Ace-Jack, of course. Zavadovich has one of them. And he with the bigger stack raises Wheeland all in. How does he get away? Hey, call. He can't. Call. Hey, call. And that beautiful <laughs> flop only wow. set Wheeland up to be knocked out of the main event. No problem. This game is unforgiving. You flop the nuts, and then a few moments later, you're flopping out of here. Even Doyle, who's probably seen that a hundred times, has to feel for Whelan. My sympathies to Alan Whelan. Boy, you come to the main event long enough, and you see just about everything. Whelan making his exit after the tough beat. They take all of your chips, Lon, and they don't even care. <laughs> Lavadovich with a nice bump to his stack. All right, we go from our secondary table to an outer table where Jean Robert Balland is on the short end of an aces versus kings battle with Kevin Williams pre flop. Williams just four bet to 40,000. Balland in danger of seeing his once big stack dwindle. Williams, a theater director in London, says theater is probably the only job less stable than gambling. Black belt? Your black belt? Not yet. Black belt? Not yet. What level are you? I believe that. How close are you to being a black belt? Hopefully a bit close up this time. I don't know if Jean or Bear is trying to get a tell on him or if he wants to fight him. <laughs> Come on. Ballon re-raises Williams all in, and Kevin says, yes, thank you. Thanks, Emily. We've seen Ballon run rough a lot at the main event over the years. The flop, seven, jack, five, nothing there for Jean Robert. Turn card, another seven. One chance left for Ballon to knock out Williams. Williams has got to avoid a king to double up through Jean Robert. Rivers the four of spades, and Williams will double up. And Williams can afford a lot of black belts now, and Ballon is short stacked. The vacant look on his face tells the whole story. You can work for days to build a decent stack, only to have it shrink away in seconds. Williams with a very healthy stack. On day six, I did the same exact thing aces against kings the other way a couple years ago. Yeah. Only the guy hit the king on the river. <laughs> Those hands happen all the time at the main event, but Jean Robert Ballon seems to get more than his fair share. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Welcome back to the Rio for day three coverage of the World Series of Poker main event. We check back in at the featured table where Willie Horton and the small blind open for 3,500 with ace jack of hearts and the big blind Phil Ivey with 10-4. And he makes the call. And Horton will live every amateur player's dream having a shot at Phil Ivey, his favorite player. Horton works in education and behavioral modification. Flop 7-5-9, not the flop that Horton dreamed of. I'm in my first main event. I whiffed on the flop, and I'm out of position against Phil Ivey. What should I do? He hands the keys to Phil. Ivey, the seasoned pro against the amateur. 5,100 and a quick fold from Willie. Ivey threw in that 5,100 like, if I just threw in 100, you'd fold. Ivey says, ah, it's just too easy. Everyone gets their share of cards, Lon. It, it's who wins the pots when you don't have the cards that make you a good player. Horton down to 27 big blinds. 1,740 players remain from an original field of 6,352. But when Doyle Brunson's in the house, he often collects most of the attention. But at one point, it looked like Doyle might not take his seat. I wasn't going to play. Uh, the, the hours and the days are just so long and demanding. And uh, Ty called me, Ty Stewart. And he said they, they had this special presentation that they wanted to uh, do and everything. Uh, so I came down and then he handed me a ticket and said, uh, if you want to play, here's a, a seat with your name on it. 
So I said, okay, I'll go do my best. There's so much like hope for someone like myself that wants to have a really long career and then to see someone like him that's been doing it for 60 plus years, it's like, all right, it actually can be done. You know, Doyle's a man, he's a legend and uh, most poker players should look up to him. Don't cry because it's over, you smile because it happened. So let's shuffle up and deal. <laughs> Doyle looked like he was sizing up that bus to take home for the mantelpiece. <laughs> On the button with pocket jacks, Doyle needs 4,000 to call the raise of Sean Chacon holding ace 10. And Doyle does just that. To the big blind, Vincent Maglio, poker pro from Revere, Massachusetts. And he calls. The 24-year-old was second in a no-limit event earlier at this World Series. Three players will see this flop. Seven, tray, eight. Top pair for Maglale, no spades. He checks. Chacon now. Chacon, 43-year-old Las Vegas pro with 11 World Series caches. He checks as well. Doyle Brunson, nice flop for the Jacks. And Doyle bets 8,500. Maglale with top pair, but way behind, raises all in. Chacon gives it up now to Doyle with the Jacks. And Doyle makes the call. Maglio in trouble. And yeah, Maglio runs oh, into a bad yeah, spot, football. and Brunson, 55 years his senior, in position to knock him out. Doyle with a healthy stack, looking to get healthier. Queen of clubs, same outs for Maglio. Maglio will need a nine or an eight to stick around. The river card is an ace, and Doyle Brunson with the knockout of Vinny Maglio. Career knockout, 232,437 for Doyle Brunson. No money for Maglio, but as Vinny disappears into the sea of tables here at the Amazon room, his chips will stay behind, but in the very capable hands of a living legend. Sneaky Doyle. You want to your jacks? Yeah. I'm looking to play a big pot. Summer in Vegas means one thing to poker players, a new World Series of Poker. This year, 6,352 players entered the main event with 30,000 chips and a dream. Players, good luck, and dealers, shuffle up and deal. The field on days one and two was loaded. There's a whole physical regime to poker. Celebrities galore. It's very sexy, what's going on on man? I see. It's not just sitting. Look at 12,000, how much you got? Flicking. I got 33 fire. I'm gonna hit you with the friggin' hammer. <laughs> and bobbing, staring, very physical. Hang on. <laughs> I'm depressed. Big name players, Daniel Negreanu. <laughs> Antonio Esfandiari. It was a lot of down, not so much up. But don't make a fool out of yourself. Phil Hellmuth. The mouth, pumped up, day one. Phil Ivey. Tom Dwan. Doyle Brunson. Sammy Farha. Former champions Chris Moneymaker, Joe Hashem, Joe Cata, P.S. Hines, and last year's champ Greg Merson, and Jamie Gold. I showed up. Colorful characters. I'm hungry. World Series of Poker, yeah! And while some would survive to day three. I'm playing with monks. You look at him smiling. He's smiling. Yeah. Most would suffer the cruel fate of an early bust out. Gentlemen, have a great year. When it doesn't work, it just doesn't work. How can you do that? <laughs> hey, easy, I'm leaving. We want no problems. More than 4,500 players have been eliminated as day three gets underway. The player who had the best first two days, that man, 52-year-old Mark Kroon, longtime friend of Phil Helmuth, who's had success both away from the felt and on it. He met Phil Helmuth playing poker in a neighborhood bar in Madison in the mid-1980s. Mark ended up buying that bar. He was 399th at the 2011 main event and in 2012 won a World Series circuit ring and bowled a 300 game. Prune with two aces has the action after Michael Hury re-raised with ace king. I'm on. Prune says, let's play for your stack and gets a call. I, mean, I come over with one hand and you have aces, Hope. Thank you, Phil Helm. I've never said that before. <laughs> Ever in my life. I, bet it, I, I, I might be chirping too quick. You'll flash me one hand. <laughs> aces? Shouldn't Helm be in mid-rant somewhere else? <laughs> Keep it red, dealer. 
Here's the flop, all red. red. That means all zeros for Huey. This is how chip leaders are made. A nine shuts the book on the hand. Boom! Crab cakes and football. Sorry about that, sir. I could be chip leader with aces against ace king. Come on! Crab cakes and football. Crab cakes and football. That's how we do that it. Hurry, an L.A. lawyer. Can he afford something better than a backpack? Another hundred grand for Croon Stack. Oh. I came over here to say no one's ever been ship leader for two days in a row, and he flashed me aces and re race. Life is life is good, poker. It's not. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. And look how hot my dealer is. I thought Halmuth would never leave. So Mark Kroon still the top dog here on day three of the main event. Let's get back to the featured table. Folded to the amateur from Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, Willie Horton with Ace Queen. 35. Says raised. Throws out a 5K chip. 35. Yeah, he made a mistake. But he announced 3,500. Nobody protests. What a friendly table we are. I'm cool with it. Hold on with Queen Jack. In the big blind, makes a call. I, was, I didn't look at my cards. <laughs> you can see how you agreed so easily. <laughs> what a gentleman you are. Heads up, Jack. Queen trade, top two for Ola, and he checks. Top pair, top kicker for Willie. 55. Announces 5,500. You sure? 55. So many ways Ace Queen turns into a loser. So many ways. Now Ola with the big hand. A check raise the 13-5. Top pair, top kicker. Bad news for Willie Hort. Short stack says all in. Hola. I call. Makes the call. Willie Horton at risk and in trouble. Well, Ola took so long to call. Willie might have thought he was ahead. Willie is way behind. So Ola with a chance for the knockout. Ten of hearts, that helps a little with a Broadway draw for Horton. So now Horton needs an ace or a king or he is gone. The river card. Will it be Horton's last? Yes, it will. Good luck, everybody. And Willie Horton is another day three casualty. The engineer felts the educator. Ola, the Nigerian-born engineer, gets a little richer. Are you sure it wasn't 5,000 pre I Honestly, I didn't look at my cards. I don't care. I probably will still have called 5,000 in that one. Let's go down to Kara Scott. We've lost Willie Horton from our feature table, unfortunately. One of those kind of standard setup hands that happen in poker. What are you going to take away from this experience? I've learned a lot about poker, learned a lot about myself, and uh, I love the main event, and I'll be doing it again. What did you learn about yourself in particular? I can play poker with the best of them and make it. You certainly can. You are sitting with pretty much the best player in the world, Phil Ivey, was there. He gave you a bit of advice in the beginning? Yeah, he told me, relax for the first 30 minutes and cover my whole cards because he can see part of the cards. <laughs> <laughs> that is good advice. Well, thank you so much for talking to us, thank and uh, hopefully you do take away a lot from this. I do. Thank everybody. Good luck, everybody. Willie Horton's made a bit run ends early here on day three. A look at downtown Las Vegas seems like a lot less than 10 years ago that Chris Moneymaker struck gold at Binion's. Inside the Rio, actor, comedian Kevin Pollock still with chips. In this week's edition of Side Action, Kevin charms his interview subject. Sorry. Thank you so much. Hey, how you doing? I'm a diamond bracelet with half a million dollars. How do you think I'm doing? Talk to me a little bit about the history of the World Series of Poker Bracelet. Well, I was born this year. You think I know something about history? What kind of questions are these? If there was one wrist in poker that you'd like to be on, whose would it be? Well, Antonio Esfindiari has an excellent wrist. Thin, not too bony, just the right amount of hair to soften the movement. I could roll on that. Okay. Or, if I may, Jennifer Tilly. Wow. Uh, while we're on the subject, are you single? Seeing anyone? I just got out of a long relationship with a diamond necklace. She was a great piece of jewelry. But in the end, we got a bit tangled up, oh. if you know what I mean. So, nothing now? I'm on the cusp of something big. Should know pretty soon, but I gotta keep it under wraps. 
Kevin Pollock truly talking, walking with a World Series bracelet. I was very specific in my thoughts. I wasn't meandering. Kevin a bit short on chips right now. Jean Robert Ballant had high hopes of a deep run, but he's way below average. A smaller stack equals a quiet Jean Robert. Greg Merson seems to have the hang of this main event thing. He's trying to become the first world champ since Joe Hashem to cash the following year in the main event. And the Michael Mizraki train just grinding along as usual. Three-time bracelet winner, and every time you look up, he seems to have a stack in front of him. I said to Scott, the only thing would be better is, because um, I was watching you on day two of the University. Oh, look, that's If I get sat at the table, lose the hill, that would be great. Dollars. And then I'm like, yeah. freaking oh. out this morning. I'm like, you're not going to believe what I said next to you. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you're such a groupie. I'm not, I'm not a super stalker or anything, but I'm a big fan. Sounds like a stalker. Look at them all. They're scared of me. They want a table change away from the Kappa Tower. You, you can always just three bet me and then I'll ship it in your face and then you can go away. That, that, that would work as well. Trash talk comes in all accents. He's good though. He's Code Kappa Tower. Code Kappa Tower is short today. Code Kappa Tower has won all of the pots he's played though. I do bless one player at the table with the run good today. This man, watch, watch cool. this space. He's going to end the day with 300,000 chips. Mark my words, 300,000 for Co Capital, and for about 400,000 for Capital. I won't be too greedy. Oliver Gill, the Aussie from Magnetic Island in Queensland, does have the gift of gab and a lot of chips to play with. Back now over to the feature table and seed one is Phil Mater. He told us this was not the best time for him to be playing poker considering he's a farmer. He said his son, though, was there to take care of the corn so he could take care of his chips. Well, his grandfather was a farmer, his father was a farmer, he's a farmer, and his son is a farmer. It's a farming dynasty. He met his wife, Linda, in the fifth grade. I think that's a little young to make a commitment, but heck, it's worked out for them. Mater open raised to 3,500 with King Queen called by Ola's A7 suited. Now Ivy in the big with two red fours will come along. Again, it's the farmer and the engineer against Phil Ivy. These are the top three stacks at this table, and they will see a flop. Four, seven, Queen. Wow, something for each, but Ivy's set of fours stands tallest, and he checks. Top pair for Mater. And no reason for Mater not to like top pair with a king kicker. 5,500, middle pair for Ola. Ola is game. Now Ivy with a set of fours. The pro with a check raise to 18,000. And Ivy's biggest fans, the Humphreys, are in the house. Good to see them. I've asked them to follow me around the country playing poker, but they have declined. <laughs> Mater. Likes his big queen, and he comes along for 12,500. Well, Ola can't like it as much anymore. And he does get rid of middle pair, so heads up now to the turn. I never get any value with my sets, so I'm writing down what Ivy just did. Check, get both players to commit chips, then check raise, and thin the field. Jack of diamonds. Ivy now has made her drawing dead. And Phil, with a lot of the orange chips, a healthy bet of 35,000. Ivy bets two-thirds the pot and hopes he has a farmer on the hook. Well, the farmer does have top pair with a king kicker, but he's drawing dead and makes the call. And, Phil call. and they are building a good-sized pot. River card, another queen. Ivy with fours full. Mater with trip queens. Oh, man. Oh, man. And Ivy oh. moves in for more than the size of the pot. Mater has him covered, but barely. Well, Mater has to love that river card, but of course, it's the worst card possible for him. Good luck getting away from this hand, Phil Mater. The Nebraska farmer challenging the man they call the best poker player in the world, Phil Ivey. Mater with a decision for almost all of his chips. It's a tough one for Phil Mater, one that he'll have to consider during the break. Back now at the featured table. Farmer Phil Mater put to a decision for almost all his chips by Phil Ivy. Ivy River to full house with the same card that gave Mater trip queens. Trying to push a farmer, farmer around. Ivy overbet the pot, hoping Mater's hand is strong enough to call. And after much thought, Mater folds and saves his main event unbeknownst to him. A reluctant fold, but a good one from Farmer Phil. If Ivy knew what Mater just laid down, even he would be impressed. How good was it? Let's see what Antonio Esfandiari and Phil Locke think in tonight's edition of Pro Analysis. 
This is a totally nuts hand. It shows you how tough poker can be. I'm making the call. Mater's a genius for folding. I don't. I, and I this is call. why he's a fish because <laughs> sometimes just because you have a monster does not mean you have to call. Phil Ivey is representing a bigger than one pair hand, hand on the flop. And so unless he's check raise bluffing all the way through, he has what he's representing, which is bigger than one pair. And so when you make trips on the river, if your opponent has what he's representing, then it's no good. So just because you have a monster doesn't mean it's the best hand. Mater, I give you massive props for making this fold. Massive props. Yeah, Phil Locke's a better looking fish than I am, but I agree with him. That is one tough fold. They never come around with... Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to see that on TV. I, th I think I'm right. I really do. Or else it's really a terrible lay down. Well, that one might be because it's big hand. He's all in. Do they have a camera where you have to show it? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Everybody knows. I'm going to look really bad. <laughs> it's going to look really good or really bad. That's hot oil. Yeah, King 10. Plus, I was nervous. Mater's wife, Linda, has been standing by her man the whole main event. And that fold allows Mater to keep the bulk of his chips. Jean Robert Balland is not his chatty self after running Kings into Aces, but back on day two, he showed some of the personality he's known for. Mike Check, is that gonna mess things up? Start the clock. I was bluffing. <laughs> I was in Paris. I had a big old bald spot right here. My head's just shiny. And the guy's like, can I try something on your head? He had some like some sort of dust. I looked like I had a full on afro. Here boss, take a picture. Uh, get the stack in there. That's the most important part. <laughs> Man, there's a lot of tweets at me. They all bust my chops. You will donk it away, don't trip. That would be classic. Oh wow, I was getting a little quiet and depressed over here. I lost eight pots in a row. Now you got me chirping again. <laughs> John Robert from Mike Check. You like that, son? I like that. That was showing a little too much there. <laughs> I don't know if you can regenerate hair through a head massage. I think Bruce Willis tried that, and look what happened to him. <laughs> All right, let's get back over to the secondary table where Doyle Brunson sits with the most chips of this group. Action on Doyle, Queen Jack of Diamonds. Under the gun, raised to 3,500. We love Doyle, but just a gentle reminder, when he won back-to-back -back main events, they were against fields of 22 and 34. 100? No. <laughs> Michael Miller with pocket nines. Miller says he really didn't understand the game until he bought Super System, Doyle's training book opus. And he will go up against the author with a re-raise to 11,000. He's got the temerity to raise Doyle Brunson. A lot of folds behind him. Back to Brunson now. Doyle published Super System in 1979, then updated it with Super System 2 in 2004. 7,500 more, and Doyle calls, hoping to catch something before it gets too expensive. And I wonder if Miller got what he was hoping for. 8, 10, 6, Doyle picks up a gut shot. But nines are in short supply. He checks. I believe Miller could get a good price for some of his hair from Jean Robert. <laughs> Miller commits 12,000 with nines and a gut shot. Well, Dora with his gut shot and two overs to the board, actually getting the right price to call here. And he has the chips to afford it. 12,000 is the call. Turn card now. Is a jack, and Doyle's persistence is rewarded with top pair. And Doyle does not waste time making his decisions. Leads out 18,000 with the best hand. But Miller with the nines and an open ender now is unbelieving and makes the call. Pot over 86,000. River card, deuce of diamonds. Is Doyle contemplating a thin value bet here? I don't know. The last time I made a thin value bet, I proposed to my second wife. <laughs> Doyle checks, happy with the size of the pot. Miller checks behind. Doyle shows the best hand. Pocket nines, though, are second best for Miller. The Super System reader conceding that one to the Super System author. No bet on the river, but chips are still coming Doyle Brunson's way at the main event. How good are you, my friend? Seriously. Doyle seeking to cash in the main event for a fifth consecutive decade. He is the World Series of Poker. 
Tonight's Bracelet Moment is presented by PokerNews.com. The phenomenal comeback year for Mike the Mouth Matisseau culminated in the $5,000 seven-card stud eight or better event where Matisseau defeated Matthew Ashton heads up to win his fourth World Series of Poker Bracelet. feels amazing. Uh, anytime you win a tournament, it feels great. All the young kids keep saying the, the old guys can't win anymore. Keep on plugging year after year and good things happen. The Mouth had a great 2013. He won the National Heads Up Poker Championship to start the year. Now a bracelet this summer. And I sat next to the Mouth the final two hours of day one of that stud eight event. It was a tough table. Lane Flack, Oase Ahmed, Ali Aslami, Maria Ho, Brett Ritchie, and of course me. He survived <laughs> it and went on to win. Well, we've got Doyle at the secondary table now to another two-time world champ, Johnny Chan, with the board complete. His jacks up, his no match for Tuan Lee's jacks full, almost 139K in the middle. Tuan Lee, LA Pro, cash at last year's main event. He bets 50,000. Chan, the last back-to-back -back main event champ in 1987-88. Ten bracelets, but he hardly ever plays any World Series events anymore. <laughs> I was going in a heartbeat. <laughs> 50,000, like, please call. <laughs> please call. Please call, too, yeah. Chan started the hand with over 167,000. Lee has him covered easily. You don't know what I have, but you know what you have. So. I know what I have, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, dude. Johnny finally does muck his two pair. The last time Johnny Chan had multiple World Series caches in one year was 2008. The league gets stronger with almost 326,000. Johnny Chan drops below 100,000. To another outer table, a picture-perfect flop of 4-4 four, four ace gave Melanie Wisner four is full before opponent Greg Jennings rivered a lesser full house. Wisner, 26-year-old New York pro with 16 World Series caches. Big pot already. Everybody needs to go to the bathroom. It's time to go. Wisner just re-raised Jennings all in. Jennings, a retired corporate executive with three World Series caches this year. Pocket sevens, base four, pocket sevens. I don't think you were called with four seven. Pull that out. Four three suited. Hell of that. Yeah, give her credit. She put Jennings on a big hand. He's got me covered, so you can put some pressure on me. She also happens to have the best hand. She flopped it. Tough to lay down a full house. It's for all his chips, though. Jennings on his feet now. All right, at this time, we ask all spectators to please And he makes the call. And Weisner will score the knockout. Nice hand. Thank you. Yeah, I remember when I first started playing poker, we didn't even allow women in the game. You see what happens? <laughs> oh, 298 entered this year's main event, and one of them just knocked out Greg Jennings boat over boat. Want to learn more about your favorite World Series of Poker players? Head to ESPN.com slash poker. Getting back over to the featured table, one of the amateurs now is Facebook's Olalua Okilola. He understands what a great opportunity it is to play in the main event. It's like obviously the biggest poker tournament in the world. The fact that you can get 6,000 people to converge. Not necessarily everyone drops $10,000, but like different kinds of way through tournaments or whatever. It's like drop $10,000 to play in this big tournament because they realize like what's at stake. If you like somehow manage to win or even on the November night, you're immortalizing poker history. Um, and like playing with so many big names, like this is one of the only chances I'm ever going to get a play with Phil Ivy. Like just being able to like survive and play against the best in the world and like try and do as best as you can, it's pretty cool. Ola was born in Nigeria, came to the US to attend Howard University, and got hooked on poker playing with co-workers at Facebook. With King 10, he opened to 3,500, picked up a customer, and Ivy in the big blind with 10-4 suited. Heads up now, here's the flop. 
It is 4 9 10. Top and bottom pair for Phil Ivey. He checks it. Top pair, good kicker for Ola, and he checks. Jack of clubs. Ivy's still best, plus he picked up a flush draw. Now checks, hoping to encourage Ola to reach for chips, and he obliges. 4,000. I'm surprised Ola didn't bet the flop. Now he jumps in. And now Ivy with a check raised to 12,000. Oh, this is what you get when you want to play with Phil Ivy. Well, uh, not wanting to go away shyly, calls for 8,000 more. River card. River card. Seven of diamonds. Ivy's hand is best. By the way, do you think Phil Ivy has ever typed in the words Facebook.com before? <laughs> you know, maybe he friended Patrick Antonius. He's got people for that. <laughs> Ivy testing Ola with a bet of 20,000. At this point, Ola just has second pair. But like Phil made her earlier, he's got to be wondering if Phil Ivy is trying to push him around. And do you want to take that chance? Ola enjoying his main event says, uh, no thanks this time. Well, it's not a big pot, but I believe 10% of it should be mine for spiritual support over the years. <laughs> it's a tough world out there in the main event, but you can't win chips without putting them to work. Ola dodges big danger, but the chips keep getting pushed to the same side of the table. Some of the very cool artwork on display in the hallways of the Rio. Kevin Pollock wishing he had those two red aces, but he does have a hard flush draw. But just a 25% chance of sticking around. He's all in against Jerry Robinson. Now the river card. It's a club, Bye -bye. and Pollock's Thanks, free gloating to friends. Perry had about his run last year is officially over. 134th last year. Can't duplicate that great run this year. That's a shame. Kevin Pollock will walk away without cashing. Good luck, y'all. Comedians later. usually get an ovation when they're done, not at the main event. To our defending champ, Greg Merson in the Blue Jays jersey whiffed on the flop, but did bet 2,000 into London poker pro Sam Grafton, who caught top pair, and Grafton makes the call. Turn card seven of clubs. Aces up now for Grafton. Another club improves Merson's chances with a flush draw and a two-way straight draw. He checks. Top two's pretty good. I expect Grafton will fire away. And he is reaching. Fires away for 5,900. The seven of clubs, one of the best cards Merson could see. He went from nuclear squad douche to a huge draw. Merson reaching for a few more chips. That's a check raise from the champ to 16,500. Merson with 10 high. Grafton should move all in here and, and see how Mr. Main Event Big Shot likes it. <laughs> Greg with no recorded tournament winning since his main event win last year. Grafton just calls for 10,006 more. So the river card, Merson still looking to make something. Is the eight of clubs, and Merson does make something. Runner, runner, flush. Yeah, world champs go runner, runner. Guys in striped shirts with 76er caps go home eventually. <laughs> Merson says all in. He's got Grafton covered. Aces up for Sam Grafton. Tested for his main event life. And with four clubs on board, he gives it up. Good lay down. And Greg Merson now with over 180,000 chips. You know, he's the world champ. He should have a briefcase, not some goofy looking backpack. <laughs> Back over to Jean Robert Ballon. He's all in with pocket fives, trying to double through fellow pro Matt Stout, holding ace queen suited. If it's Jean Robert, we know how this ends. Ballon at risk. And trip queens for Stout. The clouds darkening over Jean Robert. Yeah, Jean Robert with a 7% chance of survival. Jack of clubs brings Ballon to the threshold of elimination. Stout, a 28-year-old Las Vegas pro with 29 World Series caches. Ballon needs a five. The river is a four, and Stout's three queens hold up, sending Jean Robert Ballon to start seeking his next buy-in source. Stout has made a nice move here on day three of the main event. Good luck. Jean Robert has no chirping chips left. 
So Balland is gone, and Matt Stout has added over 100,000 to his stack already here on day three, sitting with 143,500 at the moment. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah! Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Elusive, intense, dangerous. And in the 2013 World Series of Poker main event, nine-time bracelet winner Phil Ivey has chips. Never seen a guy for my life. Just a long tournament. Close to 1,500 players remain in the main event, but it's impossible to keep your eyes off the most talented player in the room. Ivey nearly had Phil Mater's stack, which could have put him near chip leader status. Oh, he's trying to push a farmer around. It's early on day three, but the poker world is already focused on Phil Ivey. Texas Dolly Brunson, who wrote the book. This is gonna be the best day. He's moving in for the kill. And there it is. Helmut wins the championship. Moneymaker puts his name amongst the greatest players in the game. Wake me now. Greg Merson is the main event champion. Biggest day of my life. Main event, day three. Welcome back to Las Vegas as day three of the World Series of Poker main event rolls on. Over 6,000 entered, about a quarter remain. We check in right away with 10-time bracelet winner Johnny Chan, an 80% favorite to double up with Jax. Huh? With me as always, Norman Chad, who's made more World Series final tables than Chan in the last two years. Colin Moffitt with pocket sevens, here's the flop. King 5-5, five, five. Chan's still yeah. good. All right, now the turn card. Queen of Clubs brings Chan a card closer to a much needed double up. Chan figures it's safe to sit down. He still has to dodge a seven. I know you will. And the river card is the seven. The long shot comes home for Colin Moffat knocking out Johnny Chan. Boy, Johnny put that in the W column one card too early. Didn't know the poker gods punished Johnny Chan, though he did lose heads up to Helmuth in 1989. Chan was on his feet, as he should be, for the flop and turn sat down for the river, and the pocket jacks put another notch in their book. So a tough beat sending Johnny Chan on his way. One of many big names to leave the Rio empty-handed. Yeah, it's a game of skill, but in the short run, even Johnny Chan can bust as an 80% favorite. The great Johnny Chan, world champion twice, but he's only cashed in the main event twice in the last 20 years. As for other past winners, defending champ Greg Merson still with an above-average stack. The legend Doyle Brunson showing he's still got game. 95 main event champ Dan Harrington needs to act. He's getting very short. 83 champion Tom McAvoy, just shy of 100,000 chips. The Matador, 01 main event champion Carlos Mortensen in good shape. The poker brat Phil Helmuth hasn't gotten much going in this main event. And atop the leaderboard is Helmuth's friend from Madison, Wisconsin, Mark Kroon, everything going his way and working towards 700,000. The Madison, Wisconsin bar owner trying to take ownership of this main event. He credits Phil Helmuth for improving his game. And right behind Kroon in chips, the grinder, three-time bracelet winner Michael Mizraki, who was fifth in the 2010 main event. As usual, Phil Ivey always in contention. Kara Scott caught up with him during the last break. We have Phil Ivey on the feature table, one level down. Talk to us about how it's going. Uh, it's going great so far. I mean, it's a very good start. I got off to a very good start day one, which is uh, big. And I uh, had a very good level to last level. Now I have like 310,000. Um, I'm feeling pretty good. You know, it's a long grind, long tournament, so hopefully I keep chipping up and uh, do a little better than I did the last time. Phil lost almost two-thirds of his chips on day one last year, then busted on day two. Tonight, Phil is the biggest stack at his table. He looms large over any table here. Ivy has been as good as anybody in the main event during the poker boom. Four top 25 finishes in the last 11 years. Ivy has battled with seed one farmer Phil Mater, and given Mater's position, he'll probably see more of that. Mater is in the big blind when Ivy is on the button. That is usually a recipe for a confrontation or two. 
Ivy just about right where he would want to be on day three of the main event. Where are you a farmer at? Nebraska. Nebraska. Mm -hmm. You know where that's at? <laughs> I heard of him before. <laughs> Phil has no reported live caches in Nebraska. <laughs> and Phil Mater has the action with pocket jacks. I wanted to be a farmer lot, but I grew up in the suburbs and it was all 7-Elevens and malls. <laughs> Full-time farmer, part-time poker player with a raise to 4,200 with the jacks. Well, we just ran the numbers. The odds of Phil Ivey ever setting foot in Nebraska, less than one one hundredth of one percent. <laughs> this is the part of the main event where the initial rush of adrenaline tends to fade and your mind and body better be sharp for the long haul. Ivey in the big blind with eight six off and he calls for twenty two hundred more. Ivey nine bracelets, but none of them in no limit hold them. And here is the flop. It is eight, five, six, top two for Phil Ivey. Welcome to the world of pocket jacks, Farmer Phil. Well, Farmer Phil is comfortable with that flop. Ivey checked, made her bet 6,000. Nine time bracelet winner, check raises to 20,000. Ivey executing a Nebraska poker flyover right now. <laughs> Pause for concern for Mater. But he re-raises to 51,000. Well, earlier on day three, Mater thought Ivy might be pushing him around. He's decided incorrectly that that's the case this time. I'm all in. All in? Phil Ivy re-raises the amateur in. all in. I got a call. All in and a call. And Mater with his jacks makes the call to put himself at risk against Ivy's two pair. Looks like Mater might get 86th from this main event. Bill Ivey says, I got gotcha. you. Can I use my one time? We have a one time request from the friendly corn and bean farmer. They are now issued with your entry ticket. <laughs> so Mater looking for help. The queen means he's going to need his saving card on the river. Mater needs a queen, jack, or five, or he is wamboozled. He's on his feet to watch the river card. Ivy looking for the knockout. And the river card is the jack, and Mater scores big with trips to double through Ivy. There was my one time. I knew that was going to happen because I didn't bet 70,000 against him last. I swear to God, it's weird. Okay, how much is it? And I think we just reduced the chances of Ivy ever going to Nebraska to 1 1,000th one of 1%. One can't push around a farmer, huh? That's right. <laughs> Mater did cash in the 09 main yeah. event. Had the board still draw heavy on him. So Johnny Chan out, Phil Ivy bruised. No one is safe at the main event. I mean, I'll bet 70 on the river last time. He probably pays it off. Then he has f 30. <laughs> Instead, I get punished for that. For, for, for that. The Rio was buzzing when Doyle Brunson took a seat on day one of the main event. But here now on day three, it's Phil Ivey that has everyone talking. Featured table, lots of chips even after that last hand. And the Phil Ivey aura. Is it too early to be talking final table again? Final table? This is no limit hold'em. He might not make it to the next commercial break. To get through the main event, it's like driving all the way cross country. There are highways where you can go 80, but there are also roads with plenty of potholes. Sure, Phil Ivey is the Lamborghini of poker players, but even he hits a bump now and again. How will he respond? How would I know? I drive a Honda Civic. Oh, man. Look at my chips. It's so pretty. These guys are nice and, nice and neat at the top, too, in order. Like he's still in here. <laughs> Ivey seems to have let the negativity go. She'd sure like to know about the other hand. That's the one. Oh, you want to know about the other hand, too, huh? Yeah, yeah. That wasn't good enough? There have been another um, I'd like to know what you had the other hand. James Bowles. I'll tell you. You tell me. Huh. Action on the software consultant from Pennsylvania, Wait, Igor Rabinovich, with Jacks and a raise to 5,000. Carlo Lopez now. Puerto Rican magician turned poker pro, sounds familiar, Ace King. He's made three World Series final tables. Three quarters of a million dollars in live poker earnings, a re-raise to 14,000. I figured you had out of Aces or Kings. You, know? you gonna tell me? I figured that's what you had. I mean, you had to have Aces or Kings, huh? 
They're talking about the earlier day three hand where Ivy had a full house and Mater had trip queens. Is that a queen? She got a queen. A good, a with what? A king? A good queen. King queen. King queen? Please tell me if I was beat. Huh? Please tell me if I was beat. I told you. Of course you were beat. <laughs> Back to Rabinovich. He says all in with his jacks for 53,300. Lopez with Ace King calls and will try to knock out the pocket jacks. One time, dealer. No. <laughs> Let me win a coin toss. I had jacks too. Yeah, Jack. We both jacks. Thank you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Lopez wanted his one time, though he's not all in, and Rabinovich waved it off. Maybe you can get one time to reject a one time. Interesting. There are these main event rules that we have so much to learn about. Here is the flop. Jack King ace. Rabinovich fends off disaster. Jeez. Just like in the movies. Very easy. Add Queen 10. I told you. I told you I had Queen 10. Folded the keyword, Ola. The club over there make it give it a better Five, sweat. six. Five, six. No sweat, three right. of hearts. Red deuce. Acer King knocks out Rabinovich. Oh, actually, doesn't matter what deuce. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. River card. Seven of hearts, and the Jacks work for Rabinovich as he doubles through Carlo Lopez. And Lopez loses most of his stack there. He's down to eight big blinds. With the double up, Rabinovich now with 56 big blinds, over 112,000, as the blinds at one and 2,000 now. King Queen, see? Had you. And impressed Ivy thinking this guy can do more than just grow corn and beans. Real drama at the Rio. Phil Mater now on the rail recapping the action. You missed it. I got really lucky. I was all in. <laughs> Ivy had two pair, little two pair. Three, almost three. He's all in for 18, I got lucky, really lucky. Jack on the river. Huh? Ivy. He had two pair. Phil talking to his wife, Linda. He said he had me beat on that other one. He said he had me beat. If he said he had you beat, he had you beat. Phil Ivy does not lie oh, to yeah. Nebraska farmers. About three hundred. Phil Mater living to tell the tale to his wife. All right, let's get over to the secondary table where Doyle Brunson has been holding court, sitting with a decent stack of chips. Doyle has been pleasing the Railbirds all day long. Doyle and Johnny Chan both won their 10th bracelets in 2005. Amongst, amongst other things. Next to Doyle is pro Sean Chacon, calm and collected here in 2013. Quite a contrast to a day back in 2005. Now the flop is 9-8 ace. Oh, Sheik's not happy. You know, we're in a hand. You need to shut the up. Uh-oh. What did you say, Mike? Mike. What did you say, Mike? Did you say something? Hi, guys. Did you say something, Mike? Oh, you don't get a penalty for that? You're an idiot. You cannot talk about a hand in between a hand. We're playing for a lot more. of money. Hey, you Mike. jumped off your chair like you Mike. threw away part of the okay. pot. You know, how, you know how tough it is for me, Doyle? The very first second when I tried buying in, I had a $5,000 chip and 5000 cash. And I almost had security called on me. They wouldn't let me buy with a $5,000 chip. Yeah. Well, it's well, what happens when you gamble for a while. So how did you get this money? I said, my friend gave it to me. She said, well, we can't, we can't, we can't use that chip then. I said, what do you mean? I beat him in a poker game. I beat my friend at money in a poker game. He, she said, well, you said that he gave it to you. I said, yeah, after I beat him. <laughs> she, he's quite the card, a lightning rod in the poker community. A lot of folks don't like him much. He has pocket tens under the gun and a raise to 5,500. Shiki's in on Shiki once broke Mike Mattiso's glasses during an episode of High Stakes Poker. No callers yet. If he could win, we'd have a good blow ball game. You can win the tournament. Once I win, there's things gonna be changed. There'll be some changes in the, in the poker in the poker world. Maybe one of those changes would be Maybe. mandatory shaving every other day. <laughs> to the amateur from Australia, John Cullyhole with pocket nines, he calls. On the button, Polish IT specialist Pavel Zavadovich. 
Shiki's a very good low ball player. And his 15-year-old daughter, Tatiana, is a very good tennis player with a wicked 110-mile-per-hour serve. Pavel calls on the small blind Ming Lee with Queen-10 of hearts, and he calls. In the big blind, the short stack at the table, Jeffrey Saunders with 7-4 off. He'll give it up. Four players. I think Shiki got a little more action than he wanted with the 10s. All right, here's the flop. 9-6-7, a set for Collie Hole. Ming missed and checks. Shikan now with a 10s and a straight draw. That's a good board for pocket 10s. And he bets 15,000. I'm all in. Kali Ho moves all in with his set. Pavel folds. Ming folds. Shikan now. Well, you thought the set? Underneath that rough, tough exterior, Shiki's a pretty good poker player. This is for 40% of Shiki's remaining stack. If he called here and lost the hand, he'd still have 40 big blinds left. So the lightning mm. rod heads up with the lighting consultant from down under. Very nice. <laughs> Shikan with a good read. Can he get rid of it? He does. So no fooling around for Kali Hole as he's happy to be stacking chips with that board. Discipline lay down from Shiki, a good one. Yeah, it's Nice, I promise you. <laughs> Just because I lock you? I know what you had. Because wow, I had two tens, and I knew you had two nines because you were going to go in, I was going to call your ass. I knew exactly what you had. But I had outs too. I had two, oh, yeah. I had two tens and four. It wasn't eights. the best board for me, but. No choice. It'll do a little better when it comes along. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I put you on two nines, and sure enough, you had two freaking nines. Before even I saw anything, I just knew you had two nines. So many interesting stories passing through the halls of the Rio. One of the better ones is that of Laura Green and Scott Bourne. Married just as the main event began, ended up playing at the same table on day two. Here with Ace King, Laura just called the all-in of Felix Stevenson, holding Jack 10 off. Well, Green has this backwards. When you're at risk, you put your hands on your head. The flop six, a seven top pair, top kicker for Laura Green. And when you're a 24 to one favorite on the flop, you can relax a little. Turn card now. Another seven, Stevenson drawing dead. Green's aces up, gets the knockout. You know, what a story. Laura Green and Scott Bourne were married in Atlanta, flew the next day to Las Vegas for their honeymoon. Then they both played the following day on day one and survived. They both then randomly end up on the same table on day two. Scott, in fact, had to double through Laura late on day two to survive. They're married four days and she's calling his all in. Good luck making it to your first anniversary. <laughs> Green now over 50K. I know, right? That's what right? Yeah. Oh, she said, right? like, oh, it was a great honeymoon. Yeah, I see him like, Wait, hold on. Is this for you ahead of your husband oh. now? I, I got I to text him right now. He got up to 50. Did he really? So, yeah, he did. So, well, of course. So Green with a nice chip stack. Her new hubby, Scott Bourne, coming up short of his new bride. If a husband and wife both make day three, they should be able to combine stacks, take the marital deduction, and play as one unit. <laughs> that might get more women in the main event. Who knows? Back to Doyle's table. The two-time champ open raise with King Queen before Michael Miller re-raised from the button with Ace Queen. The man who wrote Super System and the man who read Super System. And in that book, Doyle wrote that he hates playing Ace Queen, so Miller should know better. Doyle makes the call for 8,300 more. Heads up with Miller once again. Miller's stack coming up short to Doyle's. Doyle has the most chips at this table. Here's the flop. King, Queen, trade. Top two for Doyle Brunson. He checks. Middle pair for Miller. By the way, Doyle says he won't play Ace Queen, but he got knocked out of the 07 main event with it. Turn card. Another King. Texas Dolly fills up. Uh, in his next super system, Doyle should write about the benefits of calling out of position pre-flop to a three bet with King Queen. <laughs> he checks again, playing with Miller. Miller, 28-year-old, born in upstate New York. He says he has no home. Just wanders around, playing poker, coaching poker, bets 12500 Well, Miller now is going to wish he paid more attention to Doyle's ace-queen chapter in super system. Somehow, ace-queen finds a million ways to lose. Doyle. Chips in hand. How does he want to play this? That is a check raise, but just a minimum check raise to 25,000. 
The hair over the glasses, I don't get, Lon. If you're gonna block your vision, why put glasses on? How many people have shrunk to that glare? Miller folds. Queen's full, huh, buddy? Shiki's close. <laughs> and Doyle stacking. I bet you got Queen's full. You give me a price if I bet it? Take the under. Will you lay me? Damn it. What would I lay you on what? I want to bet you got Queen's full. You don't really want to bet, you just want to talk. <laughs> I know what you have. <laughs> I see your hand. Any please, oh, I'm just kidding. I see your hand. But Doyle is not kidding around. He's the king of the table right now, and the legend is chipping up. It's been 10 years since Chris Moneymaker's main event win sparked a poker boom that still reverberates today. The rush of poker players to the tables caused by this man with the most appropriate name in poker was called the Moneymaker Effect. So what's changed in the main event since 2003? Well, the field back then was 839 runners, and that could fit more than seven times into this year's field. At the time, it was the biggest poker tournament in the world, but it's absolutely dwarfed by 2013's field of more than 6,300 runners. Another little piece of trivia for you. 2003 was also the year that a uh, certain poker player by the name of Phil Ivey bubbled the final table. I had never heard of Phil Ivey before. I mean, he was just some kid playing poker like everybody else. He was a face in the crowd. Everybody always says that I got extremely lucky and sucked out on Phil Ivey. I guess I'm one of the few people in the world that don't see it that way. A monster flop for Chris Moneymaker. And to be honest, I really didn't want to run him off. I mean, when you flop a hand like ace-queen on a queen-queen six board, you want action. Well, Phil Ivey is indeed going to take that bait, and he'll call it. Here comes a turn, and it's a oh, nine, nice. and that gives Phil Ivey a full house. There's no reason for Moneymaker to assume that Ivey had the pocket nines, so he's going to bet 200000 oh. He is all in. And quickly called. Moneymaker's looking for an ace on the river. It's an ace! That was obviously a pretty crucial bust because he would have de definitely been a force to be reckoned with at the final table and not someone I wanted to see there. So if Phil Ivey doesn't take that beat in 2003, he might have won the main event. Chris Moneymaker returns to Tennessee as an accountant and the rest of us are wandering the countryside looking for a good poker game. Thank you, Ace on the River. Yeah, it was a crushing blow to Ivy's tournament career as he's only got on to about 15 million in winnings since then. Ace queen for Phil Mater. And he raises to 5,000. I actually declared war on Phil Ivy earlier this year. The problem is he hasn't acknowledged it. He started Ivy Poker and brought on like 4,000 big names to work on the site. I don't even get a courtesy call. So I challenged him to a heads up horse match, but he won't respond. I played with Ivy at one World Series event this year. I kept talking to him, and he just looked at me like I was speaking in Latin or Yiddish. <laughs> Mater's only taker is Ivy in the big blind with King Jack offsuit. Here's the flop. Ace, five, ten, a Broadway draw for Ivy. Top pair for Mater. Ivy checked. 6,000 from the farmer. Quick call from the nine-time bracelet winner. Boy, Ivy apparently wants his chips back sitting on top of Mater's stack. Turn card Jack of Hearts hits Ivy, but he's still an eight to one dog. He checked again, Mater checks. River card, a queen of clubs, Ivy hits Broadway. Now, how much does he think he can get from Phil Mater? Boy, Ivy hits the straight and ace queen books another loser. Two pair, ace is up for Mater. Ivy bets 15,000. Yeah, I doubt Phil Mater is folding top two here. A call. Ivy shows him the winner and gets some chips back. Even. Huh? Even. Yeah. Yeah. Ivy should take his fellow Phil out to the dice table. Maybe he can help him get even there too. Ivy seemed to want to make sure he got a river call that time from Mater. Nine World Series bracelets teaches you a lot of ways to win. 
Come on, Phil, heads up horse. Why are you dodging me? 1,421 players remain still in the field as actor comedian Ray Romano. He came back to the main event for the sixth time. This is his deepest ever run, but his pre-flop shove with Kings answered by the aces of Kelsey Hendricks. Huh? Who folded a king, anybody? If Ray loses, at least he's going right. out like a pro, Two kings cards. to aces. Hey, everybody Two goes cards. broke here. In fact, that could be his next show. Everybody wow, goes broke here. <laughs> you got you had that before on me too, right? Jack Deuce, oh. queen, nothing for Romano. You were scared about this. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> oh, why, are you, why are you prolonging it? Six of diamonds. <laughs> Ray Romano's got to have a king. River card is a tray. That brings an unfortunate right. end to this main event for Ray Romano. Right. Well, get the crazy horse on the phone <laughs> and reserve my table. Funny men not faring well at this main event. Well, his deepest run yet. You know, he'll be back to try to make the money one of these years. The best news for him, though, is uh, he outlasted Brad Garrett. Back inside the Amazon room, Madison, Wisconsin's Mark Kroon leading the day three field with more than five times the average stack. Two-time bracelet winner Greg Mueller. Yeah, he's in the familiar massage mode. Like Phil Ivey, he is a pioneer in the all-day massage. 2012 Octo Niner Rob Salaburu has almost 175,000. He's probably a 15-second massage guy. Pros Melanie Weisner and Ronnie Barda going for the double selfie. If that photo were taken in Nebraska, they now would be officially engaged. And the grinder, Michael Mizraki still in it. It's not a big event unless he's got chips. I think he brings his own chips to every event. He is just that good. To all-time bracelet leader Phil Helmuth with ace-queen preflop going against the nines, held by poker pro Erkut Yilmaz, originally from Turkey, now lives in Sacramento, California. Here's the flop. And a queen for Helmuth. He's a big favorite. Helmuth, like Phil Ivey, having a disappointing summer here in Las Vegas leading into the main event. They both check. Turn card. Deuce of spades. No help to Yilmaz. He checks again. 8, Helmuth announces 8,000. Small bet from the brat. Inviting Yilmaz into the pot. And there is the call. He has more than double Helmuth's stack. River card. Seven of clubs. Yilmaz does not improve and can't win a showdown. He checks again. 14. 14 this time from Helmuth. Helmuth playing very small ball. The ball's so small you can't even see it. Nah, I don't know if this is a take off your glasses and contemplate it moment. He hardly ever bluffs, sir. He always he has it. He didn't say 10. I wouldn't think like you got ace jack. Now I feel like you might have ace jack. Or maybe fucking sevens. With that speech, Helmuth definitely wants a call now. Such a tiny bet, Yilmaz. Looks like he can hardly keep himself from calling. Ace queen. That's why Helmuth has cashed a record 99 times at the World Series. He makes ace queen a winner. Helmuth stacking the chips, but Yilmaz still has the 13-time bracelet winner <laughs> out chipped at the moment. Yilmaz with almost 140,000, Helmuth with about 115,000. So the poker brat's still in line for World Series cash number 100. At a neighboring table, chip leader Mark Kroon in action. He and Phil Helmuth are used to playing poker in the same room. I used to play in this little one-two game and in a little backroom bar. And I, I ran into a guy who was really loud and brash and didn't like to lose very much. God, he called a race for 10 jack-offs. <laughs> I mean, this is how I go uh, out. Everybody hated him because he always won. I was grinding on Saturdays, picking up anywhere up to $400. And that was huge money to me way back then. And then all of a sudden, one day, he won the World Series of Poker. And I'm like, he won the World Series of Poker? I go on to buy the bar that we started playing in. Those games at his bar, I even played after I won the main event. He's a lot different behind the scenes. We do a lot of golfing together. We do a lot of things together. I went out to play in a golf tournament in Las Vegas, ran into Phil. He goes, you ought to play in this poker tournament at the Four Queens. I played in the poker tournament at the Four Queens. I won the tournament. From then on, I just, had, I just fell in love with poker. If you guys catch me bluffing, I'll do a cartwheel naked through the casino. Can you even do a cartwheel? <laughs> now what is that? Are you calling me hefty? Well, these guys that play once a week, once a month, he's a master against them because he talks to them, talk, 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 throws them off with the talking tactic. If you win this hand, will you smile? Oh, you're starting to smile now. 
Oh, you got a hand. This tournament especially is filled with amateurs, and so his style is perfect. And he can hold his own against professionals too, but his style is perfect for this tournament. Well, judge for yourself, crewing up against a very talented pro and Matt Affleck, who was 15th in the 2010 main event, but Matt drawing dead with Ace King to Croon's turn straight. So beautiful, not the worst end. A check from Affleck. Croon okay, bet 6,700. Sometimes, Sometimes you good. assume the guy with all the chips has been bluffing a lot, so you start to make thin calls. Affleck holding on to ace king for dear life. I don't see an ace or king on the board, and that board is almost complete, Lon. You are correct, sir. Affleck with the call. River card coming. Another seven. Doesn't change the strength of Matt's hand. Affleck back to back top 100 finishes in the main event in 2009 and 10. He checks. Kroon with the best hand. Chip leader reaches for the big stack. Cuts out 12,700. 12,700. It's ace king, Matt. Why do you want to play against the best player when you can play against all these other guys? Croon with a little Helmuth in him. Sorry, other guys. He's a <laughs> polite trash talker. Affleck still thinking his ace high might be good. You ain't never gonna figure it out. Matt Affleck gives it up. Kroon continuing his role as Chip Magnet. Everything working for 52-year-old Mark Kroon. Please show that one on TV. Please. That'll be better than the Aruba call. Please show Affleck that one on TV. Affleck with a strong stack still, but no match for Mark at this point. So Mark Kroon extending his lead on this main event field. If he's the one with all the chips in the end, that bracelet will be his. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. You are watching the 2013 World Series of Poker main event. We're about halfway through day three. Tournament officials saying they're expecting the players to make the money near the beginning of day four. Let's catch up with the secondary table where Doyle Brunson is the definitive top stack among the eight seated there. Action on uh, Martin Ryan, an amateur from Trinidad, Tobago, looking for his first main event cash in five tries. A raise to 5,400 with a weak ace, Norman. Sorry you had to see that. Ryan is 50 years old. Maybe this will be the year that someone over 50 wins the main event again. Hasn't happened since 1999. Irishman Noel Furlong with 61. Pull it around to the big blind. Seven tray of diamonds. Doyle Brunson commits 3,400 more. Texas Dolly was 43 years old when he won the second of his back-to-back -back main events in 1977. Heads up the two big stacks at this table. King 10-10. Doyle with a flush draw. Checks looking for a free pass. Ryan with ace high. Says, uh, I don't think so, Doyle. 6,500. But Doyle has turned the 7-3 suited into a coin flip here on the flop. Doyle's hat, by the way, is 43 years old tomorrow. <laughs> and he makes the call. And he wants to uh, investigate the turn. We'll see what happens. And there's another king, two pair on the board. Ryan's ace is the difference right now. River card, nine of hearts. Doyle misses his flush draw. Well, Doyle misses that flush draw, but looks like he's gonna test the strength of Ryan's hand. Plan B is to bet 17,000. Doral is playing the board, and it's a fine looking board. Ryan's got to figure out if his ace high is good. Ryan's not going to find out as he folds to the 10 time bracelet winner. At the age of 79, you just shouldn't be stealing. Ryan falls below 200,000, still a very healthy stack. But Doyle earning more elbow room, which allows him to play his strengths when possible. All right, let's get back over to the featured table where smart farmer Phil Mater is currently the big stack of that group. Action right now on James Hudson. He's in the cutoff seat. He's got pocket fives. He's a poker pro, born in England, but he grew up in Canada. A raise to 4,500. 
Mater folds. In the small blind, David Chase, Southern California poker pro with two queens. 35-year-old, used to be a mortgage lender, but that was a losing proposition. Re raised to 16,000, folded back now to Hudson and his fives. Hudson has a sociology degree, but in a study on sociologists conducted by sociologists, they found out that 90% of sociologists don't make money. <laughs> I wonder how they paid for the study. Hudson does make the call for 11,005 more, and look at this, Mr. Hudson, you flopped quads. Uh, and Chase here betting with that less than 1% sign next to his name. He's back to being a mortgage lender. <laughs> and he bets 23600 And now Hudson has to find a way to double up with these quad fives, he's thinking. Well, right now he's assembling a slow play call. And there it is. They both love their hand. Turn guard, 10 of hearts, no queen, so Chase is drawing dead. Yeah, but pocket queens still look good with that board. And Hudson loves what he's seeing as Chase puts out over 60,000. Throwing good chips after bad. Well, when Hudson raises here, if he puts his wristwatch into the pot, that should tell Chase he has quads. <laughs> Now Chase wondering, what is Hudson up to? I'm all in. Going all for in. it all. Call. And a Chase quick call. Yeah, quick. I, I got quads. Oh. And Chase sees he's drawn very dead. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. Probably. <laughs> well, let's see. This could be the greatest river of all time. <laughs> All right, officially the river card, the four of diamonds, and Hudson will double up to almost 300,000 chips, and David Chase left with three big blinds. Nice hand, sir. Not going to claim skill on that one. James Hudson proving that big things can happen to guys in plaid shirts. Quad fives works wonders for any wardrobe. Tonight's bracelet moment is presented by PokerNews.com. Eric Lindgren's career reached another peak at the 2013 World Series of Poker as E-Dog claimed his second gold bracelet and first since 2008 when he was named World Series Player of the Year. Lindgren's victory came in the 5K six-handed no-limit hold'em event where he defeated fellow pro Lee Markholt. Lee Markholt is probably the best player that people may not know. I feel like I'm on top of the world. Uh, I feel great. I feel like it was a long journey and uh, this makes everything worth it. Eric Lindgren now joins the group of big name stars who won bracelets in the last 12 months. Quite impressive indeed. On day one, we tracked Daniel Negreanu before he busted on day two. Here he is in mic check. What do you want from my life? Let's do this. Can't complain, life is good. Yeah, feeling sexy. How long have you been drinking that soda stuff? Cigarette smoker also. When are you gonna quit? Not a quitter. Whoa, I didn't even see that. That was a flush there. I was gonna wear that same dress today, I swear. You look much better in it than I do. <laughs> you know what I feel like doing? Winning a pot. They're screwed, they're all screwed. They don't even know it yet. Oh, I got a new pickup line. What kind of material does that feel like? Boyfriend material? Oh. No? <laughs> I love that one. Works every time. That's not a good one. I don't want that one. Try again. Here, flip a different one. That's not good. <laughs> oh, you're sweet. I'm gonna come hug you, okay? Bye. Ooh, I got the nuts. <laughs> Daniel's whole life is a mic check, and he never says the wrong thing. Great player, class act, always thinking about how to make poker better. Here he was on day two, going bust when his ace king never improved. You cover, right? yeah. All right, you have to tell me a story another time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sorry, bro. All good. Daniel currently second to Matthew Ashton in the World Series Player of the Year standings, based largely on Negreanu's World Series Asia Pacific main event victory. 1,114 players left, average stack 171,000. Back to the main event, days one, two, and three. Chip leader Mark Kroon, all the cards are out. Kroon holding, can I say it, squad douche against the 10 high straight of Somar Aldarwich. Kroon has the action. Aldarwich turned the nut straight, and Kroon was drawn to nothing. Kroon thinking about doing something. A bet of 51,800. Chip leader's got a bluff once in a while. Well, we haven't seen Kroon in the spot before, betting with nothing on the river. The German youngster in an enviable spot here. He's got the nuts and he's been bet into. Naturally, Al Darwich will raise Kroon here. 
The question is how much? Wait. How much is that? Like I said, how much? It's a total of 167500 Well, if it were two wooden nickels, it's more than Mark Kroon's going to put in. So Kroon, with nothing, is not going anywhere quickly, Norman. Unless he's Hollywooding it. Uh, he bluffed at it, got raised, but doesn't appear to be ready to say uncle. Well, I wonder if Kroon sees something in Al Darwich that makes him think that he's on a bluff. I raise. He says, I raise. I can't believe this is a Phil Halmuth approved play. A raise to almost 312,000 from Kroon. Kroon with a massive misread and a massive misstep. He's blowing up his day three chip lead. Al Darwich moves all in. And that doesn't leave much for Kroon to call. Just another 28,000. Kroon's getting about 27 to 1 on a call here. That's pretty <laughs> rare. He can only call here if he believes Al Darwich is just bluff shoved. Well, I don't have a hand, obviously. I can beat a bluff. I'm never bluffing, I told you. I guess he's supposed to call just in case. He's got the chips. Uh, Look at the size of the pot. An embarrassed right, chip leader. Obviously. But obviously I can't fold. He does commit those chips. And Kroon mucks. Al Darwich now is the chip leader of the main event. Yeah, Mark Kroon blows up with King High, and we have a new king at this main event. Nearly 800,000 chips for Somar Al Darwich. And an ill-timed attempt by Kroon to play bully cost him almost 60% of his stack. Somar Al Darwich celebrates as he is gifted the chip lead, and Mark Kroon left to wonder why he let almost 400,000 valuable main event chips evaporate with King High. Oh, uh, you know, it's obviously they did a really good job. It's really cool. The sad thing is, I think I look more like Jerry Yang. Chris, part of a trio of main event stars who kicked off the day ones this year, Moneymaker, Brunson, and Mercer. A new player coming to the featured table. Look out! Nice catch, Phil. That's Bill Phillips with one of the more memorable entrances to the featured table. <laughs> Holy yeah. It's like Kramer. <laughs> I hope that wasn't on TV, was it? Definitely. They're just going to replay it over and over again. Sorry, bud. <laughs> Yeah. Now, don't worry about that, Bill. We would never do... Ah, oh, but it was so good. Let's see it again. Now he trips on the step, then tries to save his sunglasses. That's a bad move. And Phil Ivey, showing compassion I didn't know he had in him, tries to brace Phillips' fall without getting up, of course. <laughs> Ironically, Phillips owns a transportation company which takes people to um, medical appointments. <laughs> <laughs> With King Eight of Hearts, he has calmed down. And he's ready to get into the action, a raise to 7,000. Phillips hits the ground running again. He does indeed. On the button, Ivy with King Jack offsuit. I can assure you Ivy will not lend Phillips a hand here. He calls for 7,000. Hudson releases his small blind. Tomato, four tray of hearts. He's a World Series circuit grinder with 12 caches. In fact, he plays poker so much, I don't know who's looking after the farm. Norman, I think he was thinking about playing just because Ivy was in the hand. Well, let's see if Phillips can stumble into a pot here. <laughs> oh, very nice. <laughs> Phillips dominated by Ivy. Trey Jack five. Phillips with a flush draw, but top pair for Ivy. Phillips first to act. Well, Phillips tripped coming in. Now he's betting into Ivy out of position. 16,000. This is a rough feature table for the 49-year-old amateur from Kenosha. Wow, Ivy taking some time with this. Raises Phillips all in. I think Phillips might have to gamble with this one. He too is thinking about it. And here he goes all in with his flush draw. Well, Ivy nearly a two to one favorite to end Bill Phillips' day. Phillips not happy to see his king is useless here. He'll need a heart or running eights. And he does have two shots at running down Phil Ivey for the double up. Turn card now. Phillips pairs up. He's now got a chance at trips again, Norman. 
Phillips now needs a heart or an eight to double through Phil Ivy. The river card is the queen of diamonds. Ivy saved Bill from breaking his neck and then knocks him out. <laughs> Phillips exits. Well, let's see if he can exit safely. Well, there is another step. Wait for it. Wait for it. And he's safely on his way, and Ivy now has pushed past his friendly rival, Phil Mater. But you've got to get up pretty early in the morning to get a jump on a farmer. Solar Aldarwich now over 800,000, and at the top of the chip counts with under 1,100 players remaining. And Aldarwich seems to be still in shock about the hand with Mark Kroon. It was just incredible when he shoved all in on the river, and uh, it's still nuts, and he shows up. I don't know what he had, but... He said he could only, uh, he only can be the bluff, and it's just amazing now, over 800k, and wow, I'm still alive, and it was so fun with him to play, and now I think we will never be friends again. Oh, Mark Kroon will still be friends with you, and hey, I want to be friends with Phil Ivey, but I don't even think he knows my name. If a tournament has enough at stake, Ivey moves in for more than the size of the pot. And the stars align. A featured table at the World Series of Poker main event can look like tonight's. Phil Ivey. When I first started playing poker, you know, I always dreamed of winning a bracelet. And now that I have a chance to be the all-time bracelet winner, it's something I'm going to go after. Max Steinberg, Michael Mizraki, and that's just the beginning. With a brat on the loose. I'm going to play so much better than you guys. A defending champion trying to repeat. Try to do that again. And a legend defying the odds, the 2013 World Series of Poker main event is already memorable, and it's only day three. This is the World Series of Poker on ESPN. Da-da-da, da-da-da. Texas Dolly Brunson, who wrote the book. He's moving in for the kill. the championship. Moneymaker puts his name amongst the greatest players in the game. Wake me now. Greg Merson is the main event champion. Biggest day of my life. Main event, day three. Hi everyone, welcome back to The Rio for the 2013 World Series of Poker. I'm Lon McCarran with Norman, Chad, and Kara Scott. The Amazon room still full of competitors trying to claim bracelet glory. Among them, someone who already has nine, Phil Ivey. If he wins it all, I'll take credit. If he doesn't, the blame's all on him. That's the way it works. Mark Kroon was chip leader to start the day, but is falling fast. He had a blow up in one hand, bluffing off more than half his chips. Mark's buddy Phil Helmy struggling to keep his head above water. The brat still can smile, but if those chips go, he'll be in the valley of unhappiness. Laura Green celebrated her marriage with a main event entry. She and husband Scott Bourne honeymooning at their first main event. Whatever happened to Niagara Falls? Defending champ Greg Merson has a slightly below average stack. Hey, last year he was down to three big blinds and won it all. No problem. Everyone now looking up at German somewhere out Darwich, the beneficiary of Mark Prune's meltdown, the biggest name of the top 10, the grinder, Michael Mizraki. Two-time winner of the Poker Players Championship, fifth at the 2010 main event. The man knows his way around big events. He also knows his way around feature tables, and he's going to join this one. I think it's time to break the table. <laughs> a lot of players might think, uh-oh, here comes a big stack, but I was thinking, hey, they brought the bank here to me. So fast. How much you got, James? Huh? How much you got? Close to six. Five seven. Six. I don't know. I hope my man doesn't have chip envy. This is the definition of a feature table. Five stacks above average. None bigger than Ms. Rockies. The grinder is go big or go home. So far, it's been go big. Max Steinberg finished second at the national championship. Sure, grinder and Ivy at this table, but I like Max's position. I just hope he stays away from jack high hero calls. You got a fan in here? She's just hot. Imagine how we feel. Huh? <laughs> Man, you've been all day? Yeah. Let's go down a little bit. Has he? Has it? A little bit. Well, it cools down when you get more chips, but yeah, when you lose chips, it gets hotter. <laughs> yeah. Blinds at 12 and 2400, a 400 chip ante. James Hudson from Canada, ace jack of hearts. Hudson graduated from Concordia University in Montreal. Uh, I believe they are the Horned Frogs. A <laughs> raise to 5,500. Grinder with ace-queen. How much are you playing? It's 300-ish. 
Yeah, I could use another 300, Grinders thinking. And with the ace queen, a re raise to 11,600 to amateur Ola Ogilola. He looks down at King Queen suited. King Queen looks so pretty to Ola, like a friend request from an old girlfriend. Ola is a software engineer at Facebook in Palo Alto, California. 6,352 players started this main event, most of them in t-shirts. Fold it over to the big blind. Phil Ivey with two red 10s for the 37-year-old. In 2012, Ivey had a fabulous World Series. In 2013, it's been slim pickings. How much you playing, Phil? 280 or so. Ivey up almost 100K here on day three so far. Calls for an additional 9,200. Back to James Hudson, the original Razor. Okay. Yeah, I call. And he comes James along. Calls. Hudson will join two icons of the game to the flop. Ivy, Ms. Rocky, and James Hudson. The flop for Jack 10. All three find something. Ivy with middle set. Hudson with top pair, top kicker. Broadway draw for Ms. Rocky. 25,000 from Ivy. Now Hudson. Third best percentage wise, drawing Twiggy Thin. Well, he takes a glance at both of his opponents. He's going to take another glance at them. They are who you think they are. <laughs> and why am I stuck in the middle? He gives it up. I don't know how he knew to do that, but that was a nice fold by Hudson. Hudson giving up top pair, top kicker. Now Ms. Rocky with the Broadway draw calls. Yeah, Grinder says, what the heck, you only live once, and I love gambling. Turn card seven of spades. The two kings with their hearts bent on evil will sit at the same table and lie to each other, but to no avail because an end will still come at the appointed time. Wow, a Bible verse from you, Daniel 1127. Precisely. 70,000 from Ivy with his set. I think Grinder's end may come sooner than later. He does fold. Set of, set of jacks. Yeah, that's close enough. Hudson got out of dodge just in time. And Ivy reminding the grinder, this is in South Florida. This is my town. Here's some quick trivia for you. Remember any of these guys? Michael Hack, Gerardo Lubis, David D'Alessandro? Well, they all had big chip stacks last year and all finished outside the top 50. Sure, it's nice to be among the early leaders, but it's not just about how you start the game, right, Norman? Indeed, players who are great at building stacks are also great at losing them. Take the grinder, Michael Mizraki. When's the last time he actually grinded? He has one gear, turbo. He plays the main event like he's gonna knock out the entire field on any given hand. But day three chip leaders, be forewarned. Live by the big pot, Bust by the big pot. That's the grinder way, and over 14 million in live earnings says, yeah, it works for me. To our secondary table, and Phil Helmuth. That would have been nice if you just decided to raise 30,000. Catching Phil mid rant. Action on Erkut Yilmaz with pocket jacks. Originally from Turkey, lives in Sacramento, or raised to 5,100. Yilmaz finished 231st at the main event last year. On the button is Helmuth with queen tray of spades. 16. Helmuth's last cash at the main event was 2009. And Phil with a re-raise from the button to 16,000. This is a rare gear from Helmuth. We saw some of it at World Series Europe when he won the main event bracelet there last year. Now the 36-year-old Yilmaz with two black jacks. Born in Turkey. Back at the time he was playing poker there, it was pretty much just five-card draw. A four bet from Yilmaz, and that gets Phil's attention. Yeah, Phil yanks out the earbud, adjusts the cap, and reconsiders the long-term viability of Queen Trace Suda. <laughs> You're my guy, man. Wow, I think you're bluffing. I don't know why, but I want to try to bluff the best players in the world, huh? Phil Foltz. Show it. Show the nine. You show it. No. Now, you, what did I say? I showed you eight hands, right? I'm not bluffing. I got a picture pocket pair. Believe it or not. Well, Helmuth tried, but Yilmaz shot back, and he picks up the pot. You tried to bluff me, not me. I, I think I'm going to beat you for 101 pot. Because you, you have no fear, you know? You have two jacks, so you give me the 100. 
Well, if Phil beats him for 100 one pot, Phil needs to make sure he starts to hand with over 100. At an outer table, newlywed Laura Green looks to be getting her affairs in order. All in with ace jack of spades, 2010 World Series Europe. Main event winner James Board trying to knock her out with pocket nines. Can I use my one time? I believe she used her one time on her wedding. Can I use my one time, one time? Nothing much there for Green. Now, I think asking for one time more than one time might cancel out the one time. Four of clubs. The flush is gone. One card to come. Come on, give the newlywed bride an ace or a jack. The river card is another deuce, and Board wins with a better two pair. Oh, Sorry. Ah, the Brits have no heart. First, the War of 1812, now this. It was wonderful time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. We lose the better half of the honeymoon couple. Laura had little choice with a dwindling chip stack. Not the storybook honeymoon she had imagined, but what a story to tell the grandkids one day. It's a dream scenario for those remaining, but someone will win that bracelet. Inside the Rio, we check in on Doyle Brunson up to almost 440,000. He last cashed at the main event in 2004. Wouldn't this be nice? Laura Green's husband, Scott Bourne, still in it. She's on her way over there to whine about her last hand. Get used to it, buddy. Oliver Gill up over 300,000, which is about how many words he spoke when we mic'd him up back on day two. I'm Capital. Uh, here's my co-capital. This man is a crusher. He's in the run hot corner. This is Nemesis over here. He's like a stone cold killer. You don't want to play with him. He's from Sweden and he's really aggro. I'm from Queensland as well, see? Repping the state of Queensland in Australia. See that, guys? It's Capital's button. You know what that means, right? I open, you three bet, I flat, I outplay you post flop, the usual. This is why I'm the most hated poker player in Australia. All right, let's do something else. Let's make a spaceship. To defeat Capital, you have to get to the heart of the spaceship and strike him down with a single blow. So now this is the main body, this is the bridge. I'm getting a hand though, I have to play a hand. How inconvenient is that? What are you doing? Why are you playing with Capital? You know how often I flop amazing things. It's such a bad idea. Pew, pew, pew. Look at me checking over here like a weak fish. Look how sad he is now, and he's even one of the best players in Ireland. See, look at that. Bye-bye. That was easy. Capital can be mean sometimes. Oh, he's shipping it in my face. You can't do that to Capital, so it's been a good day. Capital is done. He's won his chips. Capital is satisfied. Can you guys believe that was only one level? I, I should have folded. I'm such a fish. Capital does not shut up. I had a Russian guy yell at me earlier. Lon, from here on, for the rest of this hour, you will be Capital and I will be Co-Capital. <laughs> Done. Gil flop top pair against I'm Tommy right. Chen's two aces. I can't bet a rainbow, though. I don't have any blue chips. He calls for 6,600. Aces might quiet down. Capital. <laughs> Capital, a nickname given to him by a Brazilian Chen. poker pro. That flush draw now for Chen. At the 2012 10K Heads Up Championship here, Chen beat Victor Blum, a.k.a. Easel Door 1, in round two and lost to champion Brian Hastings in the semifinals. Gil checks. He has almost twice the chips as Chen, who is reaching with his aces. That is 13,200. One of Gil's hobbies is touch football. I think he's smart not to play tackle football. Gil does announce a call. He could be smarter about this hand. River card now. Another 10. A check. You can't win if you check. Actually, he can. And he might win more if he bets. And it appears as though Chen will be betting. 22,000 this time. That's interesting. Gil used to work at Subway. Oh, That's right. Capital once made $5 footlongs. <laughs> Tough decision for Capital here. When you refer to yourself in the third person, eventually other people want you to be the next person out. Well, this is actually tough. I will, I, I will um, show at the end, just so I'm showing I'm not wasting anybody's time. He's got top pair. BTC blade with three barrel. I might, I might have just gotten owned, I guess. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Nice bet. That's him. Chen takes it. Well played. Go one. Show the camera. Show the camera. Don't show me. I won't even look. Pick one. Left or right? What's that? Right. Left or right? Um, right. Am I right? Yeah, you're right. These are his. These are his, yes. Nice hand. When they say pick one, they usually nice have hands. a pocket nice pair, hand. except when they don't. <laughs> Chen with a nice little pot there against Capital. You know what? That is the biggest hit I've coming? taken in the entire tournament. That is the biggest pot I've lost all tournaments so far. That's how I'm going to do one more. Please don't make me the nemesis. I, I'm not sure I can take it. Wow, suddenly Capitao is speechless, a first.
Let's get back to the feature table. Michael Mizraki has the most chips at that table. And this table has been joined by Tony Gregg, winner of the One Drop High Roller event, good for nearly five million bucks. Good friend of Greg Merson. And the fans giving him a nice hand here. Action on Phil Mater, the Nebraska farmer who's been holding his own here. Ace, eight of clubs. Yeah, the farmer deserves a round of applause for hanging with this tough group and for just being a nice fella. A raised to 7,000 grinder King Jack. On day two, I went by the grinder's table and all the other players were shaking their heads, wondering how he runs so good. A couple of pros have told me they think grinder wins coin flips like 65% of the time, but in poker, you know, winners win and everyone else whines. Grinder taking a close look at Mater, and Grinder re raises to 15 2. Some folds behind Grinder, and the big blind James Weeks gives it up. Now back to Phil Mater, the original Razor. The Grinder with three bracelets, two WPT titles, and you mentioned earlier 14 million in live career tournament earnings. He's won a bracelet in each of the last three years as well. Mater calls for 8,200 more, and will go heads up against Grinder. The Farmer versus the Grinder. 10-10-8, Mater pairs his eight to inflate his advantage. He checks. It was very easy when I got here, and then they just replaced just Anthony Gregg gets there. Like, I mean, Miss Rocky, yeah. no, Miss Rocky kind of sucks, though, honestly. Well, Steinberg with little regard for the bracelet winner to his right. Grinder takes a shot, 15,000. Yeah, no piece of the flop, no problem, the Grinder says. But he will rue the day he made that bet. <laughs> Grinders made a lot of those bets he may rue in the future. A check raised from Mater, the 35,000. Uh huh. There's a problem now, isn't there, Grinder? Well, I have played with Grinder. I know there's one way he deals with these problems. Yeah, it looks like Grinder's thinking there's no problem that can't be solved. <laughs> exactly. And that is a re raise to 55,000. And that is a perfect example of Mizraki's style. No pot is over till it's over. He hates to give up. All eyes now on Phil Mater, the amateur. Mater pops back, making it 85,000. Mater with the four bet there. He says, you want to play chicken? I'll play chicken, but my chicken has an eight. And that is the best hand right now. And Grinder finally relents. Yep, because Rocky has to give it up. His turn's good. Mater might be the capital of this table. So Farmer Phil does not let Michael Mizraki's aggression get the best of him there. Here right now are Antonio Estandiari and Phil Locke with their thoughts on the hand. Table presence is a very important factor at a poker table, and Mizaraki doesn't want anyone to run all over him, and he makes that very clear. Being fresh at this table, he wants to let everyone know who's boss. And Mater's having none of it. Mater's like, you just came to the table, you have twice as many chips as me, but you know what? I'm here, I'm drawing a line in the sand, you wanna fight, step over the line. And he hangs in there, and he fights back, and he raises, and he ends up winning. It's a great hand. Have to give Mater a lot of credit so far at this World Series of Poker. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah! Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. I talked to a friend of mine in Omaha and he says Mater is known as the feistiest farmer in the state. He grows agro corn and beans. <laughs> 1,056 still in the running for this 2013 World Championship. Greg Merson, the 2012 World Champ, playing with about 148,000 chips. His opponent in this hand, Corey Wunstel, all in pre-flop for just over 39K with ace jack. Merson dominated with only king jack. All right, here's the flop. And the jack hits both, but Wunstel ahead. One still from Baton Rouge with two World Series caches. Right now, he's just got that black all-in bun in front of him, but in good shape to double through the champ. One still still ahead. Merson misses the turn. And now only a king would send Corey Wunstel home. It's a four on the river. Corey Wunstel will double up through Greg Merson. No, you don't get to keep the all-in bun after you win an all-in. <laughs> That's World Series property. So Merson left with just over 100,000 after doubling up one still. Of course, Greg has come back from worse, but can he expect to catch lightning in a bottle again here in 2013?
Welcome back to Las Vegas. Over the years, Phil Hellmuth has been anything but subtle with his main event entrances. Whether in Europe or in the United States, Phil has made the start of his main event a spectacle. Thinking about going to Afghanistan, troops need to be supported. But his 2013 entrance saw That's no rough. such fanfare, just a quiet wait. walk into the Rio, all business. I hated those entrances, but well, I guess I kind of missed them too. <laughs> well, it's Phil's potential exit that he needs to be focused on right now as he sits with only 107,000 chips. Every hand could be his last of this main event. I'm a little pissed off, 8,500. And anger raised to 8,500 with King Five for Phil. Phil's still playing a bit loosey-goosey. Well, he lives for this time of year, and to have the World Series expand into Europe and Australia just expands his playground. Dennis Reyes in the big blind. Michael. Calls with pocket jacks. Reyes, a certified nurse's assistant and caregiver from Bakersfield. 8-7 deuce, a great flop for the jacks. Action on Reyes. 50-year-old grandfather, born in the Philippines in his first main event. He's going to check it over to Helmuth. 18. Phil's going to step into it with a bet of 18,000. Big pre-flop raise, followed by a big continuation bet. Is an old-school style that really doesn't suit Helmuth anymore, but he's giving it a go. Reyes with the best hand, despite being pocket jacks. Just a call. Phil doesn't like the sound of the word call here. Turn card. Nine of clubs. That gives Reyes a straight draw and Helmuth flush and straight draws. Mullen. And Reyes oh with the all in move. Helmuth oh has him covered. Wow. I can't believe the poker brat now is going to rant with his mouth full. Oh, good. He's going to chew first. With bated breath, everyone awaits his action. I brought the guy over, had 30,000 moved in every hand. It won't last 10 more minutes, but you beat me, buddy. Help me folds. Phil caught with his hand in the sandwich jar that time. <laughs> Ray is well below the average tip stack right now, which is about 180,000. Reyes' favorite player is Daniel Negrano, but Helmuth might be making his way up the list if he keeps giving him chips. My turn now, okay? Now I'm going to raise you with kings and bust you. I'll have a buck of aces if you raise me that. No, you're, you're too reckless. I watch you. <laughs> no patience. You don't have patience. You're right. I know. I know what everybody does at this table. Phil knows this table, but he and 2012 final tableist Jesse Sylvia were presented with a new challenge in this edition of Side Action. He's a shark. Thank you so much. Here we are at the Rio Hotel with a little free time on our hands. Let's return to the beginning. Absolutely. Here we go. Just right this way, please. Let's do it. How are we doing, guys? <laughs> now that's a big oh, 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 How you doing? Do you want our best game or our worst game? <laughs> Jesse, what are you doing? This is the first thing. You're supposed to try to bluff me. Nice check, brother. Nice check. I have a feeling I'm going to call and lose. Wow. He did have aces. <laughs> I knew you were bluffing. A little Dom Perignon for the table. We're going to toast a one and three dollar no limit poker game. All in moment. All right, I'm steamed. I'm tilted. I flopped top two. This guy's got your number, man. Wow, she has four of a kind. That's the most of a kind you can make in this game. We're both losing money. And you guys are a little bit too tough for us. It was our pleasure to hang out with you guys. Good luck to everybody. We're out of here. Take care, guys. Those guys were kind of tough, weren't they? I know, man. <laughs> we both lost. It was fun, though. <laughs> Jesse Sylvia may have lost that 1-3 game, but even worse, he got fist bumped twice by the brat, plus Phil put his arm around him. <laughs> I don't feel seven. so bad about losing in that game now. Phil says the eight of hearts is enough to raise to 7,000. That's the only one he looked at. Well, Phil on a mission. A mission to go back to that 1-3 game. Give me one. Reyes with pocket nines now. Wow. Just makes the call. You are just too tough, right? And he wants another yeah. piece of Phil, who's got 8-6. There's the flop. Trey, deuce, Trey. Reyes still good. 
Good looking flop for pocket nines. And it's worth 6,000. On any normal day, this is an automatic fold for Phil. Phil Helmuth is apparently sticking around at least. Now that's a raise, Norman, to 14,000. What is Phil doing? It's like he's still in the 1-3 mode, but you can't rebuy here, Phil. <laughs> or somebody said, yes, you can next year. Yeah, 8,000 on top of it. Reyes is a caregiver. Helmuth might be his next patient. <laughs> Just a call from Reyes with the best hand. Turn card now. King of hearts, Helmuth now drawing dead. A check from Reyes this time. It feels like the bizarro world, Lon. Usually others are trying to bluff Helmuth off hands. Here, he's the imposter. And Phil is putting some bluffing chips together. A small bet, 13,500. The 89 world champ determined to run the amateur over. Helmuth drawing dead and betting. I don't think he hits it. And Reyes giving pause for thought here. Okay, Phil, you can come out now. And folds. Oh, it worked. Okay. Wow. Reyes falls for it. Did not flop a big hand. You didn't start with a big hand. You didn't flop a big hand. You didn't turn a big hand. You had no hand. But he's the one stacking the chips. You got to give me a small one once in a while, man. I mean. Sure. Why not? It's a homing chips, Phil. No, I don't want homing chips. Unless they're tuned it's to this a, it's homing, homing chips. beacon. It comes back here. Phil Helmuth back over 100,000 chips, but he cannot rest easy. His stack is still way below average. Back at the feature table with 24-year-old Max Steinberg, who made a recent trip down to New Orleans. Very memorable. Steinberg nearly won his second bracelet at the 2013 National Championship. He made a now infamous call with Jack High against a full house. I call. He makes the call. He called? He's so mad he called with Jack High. Can you do that? I've been crank card for 30 years. I never called a guy with Jack High. He did recover nicely for an impressive second place finish. And a fine tournament for Max Steinberg coming up just short of his second bracelet. Max says there was a lot of deep logic behind his Jack High call. Deep logic, of course, is beyond my intellectual station. All right, we'll keep it here at the feature table. Pocket Jacks under the gun for Phil Ivey, an 09 November Niner and a raise to 6,000. Pocket Jacks is something I understand, as we both know, Lon, you can't win with them. That's true. Mater, King Jack suited into the muck. Ms. Rocky, a November Niner from 2010, calls with Ace Trey suited. Grinder thinking two cards, 6,000, that's only 3,000 a card, I call. Ola, maybe a November Niner to be. 7-5 of hearts, and he comes along. Steinberg with 8-6 of hearts. And boy, Steinberg looks like he's up to no good. Got a twin brother, Danny, made a final table. The World Series of Poker Europe main event in 2010. Looks like he sees an opportunity here. And there's a re-raise to 28,000 from Steinberg. That's Steinberg style. Make opponents make decisions for big chunks of chips. We saw it in New Orleans. We're seeing it here in Vegas in the small blind. Igor Rabinovich, software consultant from Pennsylvania with Ace King. Wow, four people already in the pot, and the 43-year-old amateur looks down at a big hand. Hold on. And he says all in, 155,000. And no worry that there's so many bracelet winners involved in this hand either, Norman. If Ivy only knew. Ivy folds. Mizraki folds. Ola folds. Steinberg? He raised it with 8-6. 6 And what's a count? Well, sometimes you make a squeeze play, as Max did, and you get squeezed out. I don't think Max can play here. That's all right. You are right. Max does fold. Ivy gave him a lot of credit folding the jacks. Well, Rabinovich with the right play, and he owes that pot to Steinberg. If Max doesn't make the big three bet, Ivy's going to call an all-in, and Rabinovich would be racing for his main event life. Well, Ivy looks like he really wanted to play that hand against Rabinovich, but Max Steinberg complicated things a little bit, and Rabinovich takes the pot free flop. 
fewer than 1,000 players now in the main event. Got 191,000. Sorry, you're just average. Let's get back to the secondary featured table. Phil Helmuth there. He's in the big blind with ace nine. And he's putting out chips to call Rupert Elder's under the gun raise with two queens. And the poker brat squadoosh tour continues. Flop five, deuce Check. ten. Nothing there for Phil Helmuth. Elder, 26-year-old Scottish pro. His girlfriend, Melanie Weisner, still alive in this main event. Phil checked. Elder bets 7,500. I'm thinking when I come back in the next life, I want to be Phil Helmuth's fashion coordinator. Talk about a no-show job. <laughs> Helmuth has been quite active with questionable cards at this table recently. 16. He wants to check raise to 16,000. There we go. This is actually the poker brat raise with Squadoosh Tour. And Elder now charged with figuring out if Helmuth has a big hand or if Helmuth has lost his ever-loving mind. <laughs> Rupert, a very solid poker pro. And, well, does he want to re-pop Phil Helmuth here? He does. He now makes it 28,000. I think Rupert Elder has a little white magic. Wow. Here comes the obligatory rant and fold from the brat. Just came, to, came to just try to play every pot fast against me, huh? These Scottish kids. I mean, I'm not even bluffing, but... Bill folds. You can show the king, queen, or whatever. You were dead with that hand, but go ahead, show it. I expect you to go off for me. Rupert with a healthy stack at this stage. I'd be very curious to see what that hand was. This hasn't been Phil Helmuth's finest hour. Phil giving voice to his shrinking stack frustrations. Nice hand, buddy. When's it my turn against you? You just won every hand against me, right? I always have it. I always have at least ace high. Everybody. He may still be talking when we come back to him. Let's catch up with 2012 champ Greg Merson. All his chips in the middle with ace eight of clubs. He's up against the pocket tens of Canadian pro Samuel Sahai. Maryland by Maryland on the ropes. Not much help there for Merson. Sigh of relief from Sahai. Merson going to pack up. You know, maybe if he wasn't grazing the World Wide Web on his tablet, he wouldn't be in this all-in position. <laughs> turn card is an ace, and Merson finds new life in the turn, but does he know it? Well, Samuel knows it. Merson, though, I think he's halfway back to Baltimore already. River card is a king and an underwhelming double up for the defending champ. Greg, you won? Yeah, he might not find out he won until he checks in at the airport. Sahai gives up a big chunk of his chip stack. Merson now up to almost 240,000. The defending champ was all ready to make a day three exit, but that ace on the turn gives him an above average stack and renewed main event life. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Well, it's been a successful summer partly because I am just a great player and a lot because I'm just fortunate and the card, the things go well for me. And uh, I've just had a lucky run, but I think that I, I play very well and I really like the way in which I play, how it differs from other people. And I'm, I'm proud that I've sort of come up with a new style and it's showing results. It makes me really happy. 2011 was so bad poker-wise, Max briefly thought about doing something else, but 2012 was rock solid and he's been rolling in 2013. Under the gun, plus one, king 10 of clubs for Steinberg. Max looks like he's holding onto a ride at an amusement park before he acts. Typical of his style, regards the surroundings, makes his optimal play, and then the larger than most pre-flop raise to 9,000. The big blind right now, 2,400. And that induces a lot of folds, and I think that's exactly what it's intended to do. Folded to Ivy, Jack 10 into the muck. Hudson on the button, gives it up to Phil Mater in the small. He folds to the big blind, Michael Mizraki. 
I think it'd be easier to pass a nationwide online poker bill than get Grinder to fold his big blind. <laughs> well, sometimes defending your blind is like standing on the front lawn with a rake yelling at kids. Nothing good can come of it. Heads up. Double gutter for Grinder. Top pair and flush draw for Steinberg. Check. Did he say check? No, he didn't say check. He said he's meeting the Dalai Lama for lunch next Tuesday at Applebee's. That's a check. Steinberg with the best hand, 13,000. 13, well, the grinder's not going anywhere. He might even raise. Big draw for Mike. Just a call. Turn card now. Five of club. Steinberg turns the flush. Grinder with an eight high straight and a straight flush draw. And Grinder bets 25,000. Wow. He will rue the day he made that bet, Lon. What a card that was. And I got to believe Max Steinberg is loving his spot right here. King high flush. And that's more than 25,000. Such a good card for Grinder normally, but he's just a two percenter to win it. That's a raise to 70,000. Well, it all started defending your big blind with 7 6 off. Sometimes it's better just to move on. I know I did after my first wife left me a third time. <laughs> Ms. Rocky. With the call for 45,000 more. Yeah, Grinder makes the call, and he's got a headache coming. He needs the perfect card on the river to make the best hand. He needs the seven of clubs to make a straight flush. The river card is the six of diamonds. Grinder checks again. Steinberg is holding on again, but this is a scary ride for Ms. Rocky, not him. Well, Michael thinks he's going to get off that easily. He's got another thing coming. Several thousand things coming, perhaps. 120,000 things coming. And what a spot Grinder's in here. I don't know if I should raise you or not, but I can't now. A raise here is not good thinking. You might have queen jack of clubs only. Now you're thinking. No reaction from Max. A call here would be for one third of Grinder's remaining stack. Oh, here's Max. Grinder does call. Plus. And Max shows him the winner. Grinder shows his flush. six, but Steinberg will stack the winnings. And Steinberg now with by far the biggest stack at this stack table. Over 612,000 as Michael Mizraki cools off and must surrender almost half of his chip stack. Nice one. Thank you. Well, Max Steinberg called himself a great player, and he played like one right there. Steinberg, certainly a force to be reckoned with here on day three of the main event. Tonight's bracelet moments are presented by PokerNews.com. It felt like 2007 all over again as that year's World Series Player of the Year, Tom Schneider, rose to success once again in 2013. Schneider captured two more bracelets this summer, both in horse events, the $1,500 buy-in tournament where he bested Oase Ahmed heads up and the 5K buy-in event, which earned Schneider nearly $320,000. I'm very happy and very tired, very tired. I've been playing poker, you know, 13 hours a day and uh, not getting much sleep, but I, I feel great. Winning two bracelets in a single year is an impressive accomplishment, but not as rare as you might think. The last time it did not happen was 1999. 14 straight years with a multiple bracelet winner. Larger fields now, but more chances to win. There are twice as many bracelet events as 10 years ago. Phil Ivey, who won three bracelets in 2002, under the gun, ace, king of clubs. Ivey, Puggy Pearson, Ted Forrest, Phil Helmuth, and Jeff Lissandro, the only players to win three bracelets in one year. A race to 6,000 folded to farmer Phil Mater with pocket eights. Mater's been married 31 years, which I think is tougher than winning three bracelets in one year. <laughs> 6,000 is the call from Mater. Folded around to Ola. Yeah, Ms. Rocky gave it up. King, six of diamonds, and that's a call. Steinberg now, nine, seven of hearts. Ola falling victim to the amateur suited king curse. Very common affliction. Steinberg. Hangs on to that roller coaster and then calls. Of course, there's that old line about the three rings of marriage, engagement ring, wedding ring, suffering. <laughs> uh, 
All right, fold it to Tony Gregg, and he gives up the big blind. So four players, Mater right now with the only made hand, the pocket eights. All right, here's the four-way flop. Jack seven king, two hearts. Ivy, top pair, top kicker. Steinberg favored, though, with the flush draw and the pair of sevens. Ivy bets 15,000. Now Mater with a pocket pair. Now they're in the muck. Ola, a top pair, but a bad kicker. Well, the farmer made a good fold. I'm hoping the engineer can make a good fold, too. And you wonder what card was he hoping to hit. He does call. Steinberg favored. He calls. So it'll be heads up plus Ola. <laughs> Turn card ace of spades. Keeps getting better for the best hand. Top two for Ivy. Well, you can't tell, but Ivy is in a gleeful mood over the whole pre-flop flop and turn situation. And that's 40,000. Ola. Hoping the engineer can make the good fold now. Drawing dead. What can I beat? What can I beat? The answer is nothing. And he does finally fold. Steinberg now. Max getting almost 3-1 to one on a call here, and he's about a 3-1 to one underdog. And don't get me started on the implied odds. <laughs> That's a call. Heads up in reality to the river. Safe card for Phil, the five of spades. Yeah, very safe. Phil just knows he's best. He checks. Hoping he can get Steinberg to bluff at it. Steinberg checks. Yeah, good time for Max not to fool around. So Phil Ivey will take that pot here at the featured table. Good lay down. Ivey, Ivey, Ivey! <laughs> the Humphreys with plenty of chances to wave their sign today. Phil and I right now are thinking the exact same thing, but I can't share those thoughts with you. <laughs> As day three wears on, it seems clear Phil Ivey has brought his A game. The nine-time bracelet winner nearing 400,000 chips. Currently the biggest stack in the Amazon room belongs to Dick Van Lyke with nearly one million chips. Fewer than 900 world champs in waiting remain in this poker spectacle. At the secondary table, Vic Sinelli from Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania. He's got an engineering degree from Carnegie Mellon, but has been playing poker for a living since 2007. And he thinks pocket jacks right there are worth 5,200. Hold it to Phil Helmuth on the button with pocket tens. Phil finally gets a hand, and he's in awful shape. He calls Rupert Elder in the small blind folds. Big blind gets rid of it, so heads up, Sinelli and Helmuth. And Sinelli has Phil dominated. Here's the flop, 6-6 six, six, deuce, a seemingly good flop for each, but Helmuth in trouble. Sinelli, a 39-year-old in his second main event. Failed to cash in his first time around in 08. Bets 10,200. This is a pretty good flop for pocket tens. And if Phil thinks he's best right here, he might push. Doesn't look like he's going to push. He does look like he's putting a raise together. Raise tempter. And that's a min raise to 20,400. A min raise in that spot. Another Helmuth-esque move. How much more you got, Phil? Asking the brat how much more he has. A poker player's dream. 30, 35. Right. I'm all in. All in, then. All right, I guess I call him. Phil calls reluctantly all in. The Jack. clock ticking on his demise if he doesn't get lucky. It's been a bad World Series for Phil Helmuth. About to get worse. Good hand. He had 15 big blinds left when he called all in with the pocket tens. Sanelli trying to knock out the 13-time bracelet winner. Nice hand. All right, the turn card. Helmuth at risk. And he got a little life with a flush draw. Well, like Greg Merson, he's packing up. But Helmuth can survive here with a 10 or any spade other than the jack. The river card now. Is it Phil's last of this main event? It's black, but a club, and the 89 world Game. champ is out. Game. Good game. All right, Phil. Game. A somber yeah. Phil Helmuth graciously says his goodbyes. Sinelli does the deed. Good game. Phil's 100th World Good Series game. cash will not come in Las Vegas, but he's always got Paris and the World Series Europe. Sinelli takes the last of Helmuth's stack, but he and others have no time to relax. This is the main event. Right now, Kara Scott is with Phil. We've lost Phil Helmuth from this year's main event, but with nearly 100 World Series of Poker caches total, you've done this so many times. Talk to me about the experience of this summer. 
the summer it feels feels like a horrible summer to me. Uh, very frustrating. I'm a little. I'm very dejected. You know, when you get eliminated from the main event, it's like the worst day, you know, um, of the year. And so I'm just on the heels of that. So, you know, I look back at the World Series of Poker Europe. They had five tournaments. I had four caches, and I played 40 here. And I had like a fifth place finish, which a lot of people think is good, but um, my standards are a little high. Well, thank you so much for talking to us, unfortunately. Eliminated from the main event, 13-time bracelet winner, Phil Helmuth. A bad summer, but career numbers unmatched in World Series history. Most caches, 99. Most final tables, 48. Most bracelets, 13. As we move around the Amazon room, we get a look at Rupert Elder's girlfriend, Melanie Wisner, up over 400 grand. The Heads Up Online specialist in good shape to get her first ever main event cash. The current chip leader, Holland native Dick Van Lyke, going for his first World Series cash and more. His favorite player is Marcel Lusk. I've got a root for him on that alone. Meanwhile, post bust out Phil Helmuth, gracious enough to take photos with his fans not easy to do after getting knocked out from the main event and to his credit the poker brat is always great with the fans well as long as none of them has ever put a bad beat on it he does sound boastful but phil usually backs up his boast it was an under par world series for him in las vegas here's a look at the current top 10 stacks no more grinder up there 861 players remain only 648 of them will cash we are getting close to the money at the 44th world series of poker main event it's called the longest walk of the year leaving the rio after busting the main event but if it helps you always have lots of company a day three reflection reveals the emergence of characters yes phil mater where are you a farmer nebraska nebraska you know that's at? <laughs> Oliver Gill. What are you doing? Why are you playing with Capital? You know how often I flop amazing things. Pew, pew, pew. Mark Crew. Why do you want to play against the best player when you can play against all these other guys? Sorry, other guys. Big <laughs> names on the move. I got to keep you out of my way. Even. Yeah. And fallen stars. Wow, I had the worst hand when it went in. That's shocking. The immediate task for the 861 remaining competitors is to reach the money on day four. But first, they must finish day three. Texas Dolly Brunson, who wrote the book. This is gonna be the best day. He's moving in for the kill. the championship. Moneymaker puts his name amongst the greatest players in the game. Wake me now. Greg Merson is the main event champion. Biggest day of my life. Main event, day three. Welcome back to Las Vegas for the conclusion of day three of the World Series of Poker main event. The action nonstop inside the Rio. Trash talker Sean Chacon with aces has Surrender Singh with one foot out the door. Matt Flint, I get um, Russell Wilson. Tell him I get, um, you could have Tom Brady, I get, um. Singh flopped one pair. I get, um, the Green Bay quarterback. No! No! Oh! Singh Rivers kings up to stay alive. Sean Chacon takes it rather well. I'm Lon McCarran with Norman Chad and Kara Scott's standard shaky demeanor. Doyle Brunson with chips looking for bracelet number 11. He once won a bracelet four consecutive years before there was electricity. Greg Merson, the defending champ, still in the hunt. He's an Orioles fan, but wears a Blue Jays jersey. Kids today. Holland native Dick Van like the chip leader. Let the Marcel loose comparisons begin. Well, Marcel's the flying Dutchman, but this guy flies helicopters. 861 players left in the main event, fewer than 100 tables. It is a typical leaderboard of early main events, international, less than famous, but no doubt plenty of poker talent out there. And come November, whoever has all the chips will end up with $8.3 million. Michael Mizraki wants a big stack, not so much. From grinder to grinded. Max Steinberg has increased his stack nearly 12 times. I believe you hired someone to do that math for you, Lon. <laughs> and Phil Ivey is still in it, nearing a half million and on top of his game. If he plays Phil Ivey poker, he'll be okay, and he knows how to play Phil Ivey poker. The feature table may be one of the toughest in the room. Tony Gregg, very talented, though with Ivey on his left, he may have some trouble. You say trouble? 
double. I say neutralized. Greg has 48 big blinds, and Ivy to his immediate left. Sorry, Tony. And all of a sudden, a once flush grinder below the average. He's okay in chips, but at this stack table at the moment, he's an also ran who could get run over. Phil Helmuth valeted my car when I came back. What? Phil Helmuth was dressed up in a valet uniform. When I got back from, from dinner, he was like there to park my car. Was the camera there? Yeah, and Craig was with me too. They were probably loving it. <laughs> we did have some fun with Helmuth and indeed had him parking cars. It's like, oh look, a couple of VIPs, Craig Merson and then he's like, oh, what's your name again? <laughs> I'm like, oh, you don't know my name? <laughs> Phil Helmuth wouldn't know his parents' names unless they were on his birth certificate. <laughs> he should know Tony Gregg's name. Tony took down the one-drop high roller event. Three chips in play, 500 to 5,000. The blinds at 1,500 and 3,000, 500 chip ante. A raise from Ivy with pocket sevens to 7,500. James Hudson, 9-8 of hearts. And Hudson from Canada. Looks like he wants to play. He calls. Phil Mater, the farmer from Grand Island, Nebraska. It used to be an island, no longer an island. Pocket deuces and a call. On the button, the grinder, ace tray suited. How's the grinder going to pass up a suited ace? <laughs> no kidding. He makes the call as well. And the Facebook software engineer, Ola Okilola. Ace nine suited, why not? It's a party. He loves the suited cards. He calls for six grand. Max Steinberg in the big blind. Getting 10 to one on a call. Nope, he's not going to be there. What a party pooper. Five-way action. Really? Ivy with the best of it right now. Ivy's not even thinking about this hand right now. He's thinking about the absurdity of Phil Helmuth parking cars for camera time. <laughs> All right, here's our flop. Six jack, six two diamonds. Ola, no pair is no good. He checks. Ivy with the best hand still. Yeah, when you're Phil Ivy, that's how the flop comes out for pocket sevens against four opponents. Bet of 20,000. Hudson to folds. Mater gives up his hand. Grinder now with the flush draw. Stack of yellow for a call. Olaf folds. Heads up. Ivy and Grinder. The two kings with their hearts bent on evil will sit at the same table again and lie to each other, but to no avail because an end will still come at the appointed time. Again with Daniel, 11-27. Queen of hearts on the turn. Ivy's two pairs still best. I think it's very well expressed. <laughs> Ivy checks with the best hand. And that gets Grinder to bet 25,000. As Rocky says, all right, your hand's not that good, and I can pretend like part of that board hit me. Yeah, maybe Ivy put Grinder on a hand and feels that is a good board for Michael. Uh, I think the problem for Grinder here is that Phil Ivy figures out these puzzles like he's Rubik solving a Rubik's cube. Grinder, not your everyday main event opponent, and Ivy does give up the hand. Well, I guess now and then a Rubik can't solve a Rubik's cube. Everyone's human. Tough spot for Ivy, but he's made millions doing the right thing in tough spots. Still very healthy in chips. Big pot. Big pot. It's a start. Just picked up 50k. Not including the humble blind. You got a bluff. <laughs> Well, indeed, it wasn't a huge pot for the grinder, but he did need that jump start. What am I doing quads, you know? It's not every day that you see nine-time bracelet winner Phil Ivey make the wrong read, but late on day three as amateurs and dreamers return to their daily grind, pros are faced with opponents who look like them, other pros. So, Norman, now how does the game change? Why don't you go find a poker professional <laughs> to ask your question? How would I know? I'll say this, my strong amateur poker intuition tells me that more pros means more pots will be contested. It's going to be tougher to win pots. You better continuation bet with conviction. Your check raises better be convincing. It's a pro eat pro world out there now. It's going to get bloody. Even Phil Ivey should wear a helmet and pads. Well, there you see a few of the names of the solid pros still in the field. You always need your A game in this jungle to an outer table on the left. Pro Melanie Weisner turned a flush, but she and Sinovio Ramirez, who flopped trips, are drawing dead to the full boat of Brian Applebaum in the black T-shirt on the right. 22-5 from Weisner. The others checked. What's the small wager? At the Norman Chad School of Poker, we offer crash course bet sizing seminars for all ages. All in. Applebaum all in. announces himself all in. For 102,500. Now Ramirez with trip jacks. But how can his hand be good here? Slams down the fold. 102,500. Yeah. Yikes. She's given herself plenty of room to get away from this hand with her small bet. What's he got? 
I don't think you're allowed to discuss it. We can discuss it or heads up. I think they changed the rules about that. <laughs> well, six I can't. Ago. I can't tell you my exact holding, but I can say like how it was, which I do. My rule is never talk to a woman unless you're legally obliged. I don't know what the rules are. You can. Honest to God, I don't know the rules. You can talk your heads up, and you're already all in, so it doesn't change your act. Yeah, we can talk. You can talk. The dealer is correct. Does that make sense? I guess you have king, jack, or a higher blush. Or a jack, maybe. Just a jack. She's ruled out a complete bluff, which puts her on the right path. Oh, well. My next, my next I think is, uh, you Steve have king, and jack, or a higher blush. Either one beats her, and she lays it down. Well, she found a way to save 80,000 chips there. She's out of my league, Lon. ESPN. They want Apple Bomb to show. He obliges. ESPN. Uh, I'd pull it. You can turn over my hand. Nine, nine, seven of diamonds. I don't like confirming a woman's intuition there. Nice pot for Apple Bomb, but he gave Weisner what she wanted with the peak. Better than, no, it's better than just like bet four. I bet the river and pay it off. Then I bet the river and you pay it off anyway. Maybe not. You're going to lay it down? I have a bad feeling. Like, wow. what do you have? You have a jack, or you don't gonna, even have was, a jack. I was gonna you have say jack five, king. Four, I was going to say five four hearts. Oh god! <laughs> you show me five four hearts, I will eat your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Melanie Weiser showing a big fold can be just as valuable as a big pot. It's the banner that can't be missed. Right outside the Amazon room, the commemoration of Greg Merson's 2012 Main Event Championship. Merson and three other Octo Niners, Russell Thomas, Steve G, and Rob Salaburo, still around here on day three, hoping to make another improbable run to the main event final table. Russell also made the main event final table in Australia this year. Well, whatever he's listening to, I'll have some of that. Steve G still likes the Raiders in blue hoodies. He really likes showing that 58-year-olds can hang with the young guns. Rob Salaburo still doing everything quickly except bust the main event. He's hoping to dish up another order of huevos rancheros. And, of course, the man on the banner, Greg Merson, the player anointed poker's ambassador since his remarkable victory. Being defending champion is uh, pretty cool in, in a sense that people will show you a lot of respect in tournaments. People are giving me credit and folding, so it definitely helps uh, for my tournament game, for sure. But as all main event champs know, going deep requires a bit of luck, and sometimes you just have someone's number. Oh, it was in 2012 that Merson busted Wilfried Heerig with a big suck out. The turn card, oh, and Merson with two pair. The river card, the seven of spades. He recalls short with the pocket aces. And incredibly, our cameras caught a heads up hand between Merson and Herig on day two this year, where once again, the defending champ eliminated a stun. Herig hitting a two outer on the turn. That was him. That's how you busted last year. So I just two outed him for keeps in this. That guy's gonna have nightmares about you. <laughs> if I'm Wilfried Heerig, I'm just lying face first in a beanbag chair somewhere trying to sleep off those two main event ending bad beats to Greg Merson. At the secondary table, Merson wakes up with aces after two players are already in the pot. Merson in the big blind. Samuel Sahai opened under the gun with ace king to 6,000. Phil Long with pocket fours came along. Of course, Merson cracked Heerig's pocket aces last year. And then this year, when all the chips got into the middle, Merson had a 9% hand and hit it. Merson with the re-raise to 24,500. Sahai now, Canadian, living in Vancouver. There are different nicknames for different hands. It bears repeating why some people call ace king the Anna Kornikova. Looks good, never wins. <laughs> Well, Sahai, looks like he wants to get busy here. Sahai's just 21, so young, so much poker pain in front of him. Four bet to 43,000. Phil Long, now 24-year-old British pro, folds his fours. Merson now repops it to 76,500. I'm all in. Sahai all raises in Merson all in. Cool. And Greg makes the call with the best oh. starting hand in the game. Just thought that I didn't want you to like rip nines or something, so whatever. I mean, it's a tournament and you have Ace King. Don't, don't feel um, too bad. 
The old man giving the kid a pat on the back. <laughs> There's the flop. All clubs, neither holds a club. A chop is possible. Merson runs so good, his opponent just went from 6% to knocking him out to less than 1%. Turn card, king of hearts. That pair so high, but he needs more. Well, Merson's not running good here. His opponent just went from less than 1% to knock him out to 5%. The river card now. Merson at risk. The five of diamonds and the aces hold up for the champ. And Greg Merson doubles up, sitting with a very respectable chip stack here on day three, approaching 600,000. Maryland's never gone back to back with national titles, but maybe Maryland can go back to back here. Over 30 years separate their main event titles, both healthy and chips. From Merson to Doyle Brunson, Doyle flopped a gut shot to a king high straight. His opponent, though, Anders Taylor, is ahead with ace high and a 10 high gut shot. Taylor checked the flop, as does Doyle. Turn card. Five of clubs, no help to either player. Taylor still ahead. Taylor out of position. Doesn't know whether to bet here or ask Doyle if he can borrow his sweater. <laughs> they both see a free river card. Jack of hearts. Texas Dolly gets there with a king high straight and a bet from Taylor, 6,500. Taylor trying to steal the pot with a value bet bluff. Doyle will return serve with a son. I've got the nuts raise. And Taylor thinking, oh, no, he's going to raise me. Texas Dolly has pocket lint older than Anders Taylor. <laughs> Doyle Brunson says, uh, let's play a big pot, son. 36,500 total. I really believe you checked back in for you. Doyle pretends he has bursitis. Taylor trying to figure out the two-time world champ. I can't beat much. <laughs> Doyle doesn't talk to people one-sixth his age. <laughs> Taylor lays it down, and Doyle Brunson will take that pot. I love that smile. The past and present of the main event running good here late on day three as we continue to roll towards the money and eventually the November 9. 8.3 million dollars to first place, plus that bracelet valued at a half million. We get a quick look now at poker pro Phil Galfon feared in all formats, but particularly in the online high stakes cash games. Somewhere Al Darwich took his turn as chip leader, still has a top 10 stack. Sunglasses, headphones, hat. Come on, man, just play poker. And there is Michael Mizraki, the grinder at the feature table. No headphones, no sunglasses, backwards hat. Back on day two, we caught up with him for a mic check. So yeah, it's only be nice. You owe, you owe me a pot. At my age, at 32, it's like that you're old for poker. Right now, everyone's like 12 years old playing. If I can just maintain my stack and double it up, I'll be happy. Show the kings. Let's see that one. Mic check. <laughs> oh, nice to meet you. He's my, definitely my nemesis, yes. Try one more time. If he takes 10K, I, I get him for 1K. Dominated. Mic check. Nice catch. Get it back now. It's a good river card for me. It's a good flop for me. Bad turn card for you. I swear to God, I flopped it straight. At a full house. At a full house. Mic check, mic check. I'm looking forward to a deep run. This has been a mic check with Michael Legrand and Ms. Rocky. See you all later and good luck. Are those for sale too? Yes. Nobody wants a rose, right? Grinder talks the talk and eventually his cards speak volumes. Nine tray of clubs, a raise from Grinder. Oh, we used to have the wild card hand. Tonight we bring you the don't try this at home hand. Nine tray open raise. Hola with a suited jack eight makes the call. Ms. Rocky and brothers Robert, Eric, and Danny all cashed the 2010 main event. Four siblings in the money in a field of 7,300. Every time I say that, I think I'm making it up. It was impressive indeed. Heads up, Ms. Rocky and Ola. Ola would be shocked to know that he's ahead right now unless he's seen Grinder play. Six, eight, seven, one, heart. Ms. Rocky open ended. Ola with top pair. He's still ahead. We got two players here who can't wear their baseball caps straight. How come Eminem doesn't play the main event? <laughs> 10,000 from Grinder, 10,000 from Ola. Deuce of diamonds on the turn. Ms. Rocky misses. But he keeps firing. 25K. Grinder with the double barrel. I wouldn't try that at home. I mean, Mizraki keeps rolling down the middle of the highway and just figures his opponent's going to jump off the road. That's the grinder way, and there's a call from Olaf. 
pro and the amateur. The river card now. Five of hearts and Grinder gets there with the straight on the river. That's how the Grinder rolls. Raise pre-flop with the worst of it, bet the flop with the worst of it, bet the turn with the worst of it, and then get there on the river. He says 80,000 big bet. Is that suspiciously big? Yeah, the Grinder betting it big, hoping Ola thinks he missed the flush. The Facebook software engineer trying to figure it all out. Good luck. Ola checking the board. What can he beat? Doesn't look happy about it. Does lay it down, and Grinder will take that pot. You know, I think the Grinder works out to keep in shape dragging in pots. <laughs> Michael grinds Ola's chip stack down further. His losses are taking a bigger and bigger percentage of his stack. Michael Mizraki, three bracelets, 32 World Series caches. Once with a dominating chip stack in this main event, now trying to play his way back into contention on day three. Phil Ivey actually still thinking about Phil Helmuth parking cars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to the secondary table and the rising chip stack of Greg Merson, nearly 600,000 right now, the most at this table. Folded around to Merson. Hoping to start a real estate business one of these days, Ace Jack. Merson says he wants to be known as one of the hardest workers in poker. Says he has to get the most out of his abilities because he's not as gifted as other players. Merson with a raise to 6,000. Merson says his biggest edge in poker is playing cash games. Button folds over to Bruno Lopez, French artist, rapper, poker player, Queen Ten of Hearts, and he calls. He is known as Cool Shen, part of the hip hop group NTM. And for some silly reason, I love Queen 10 suited. I know it's a leak, but I like it. That's a big leak. Trey King Jack Lopez open-ended with a flush draw. He checks it to Merson, who caught middle pair. And he checks. Trey of diamonds. Lopez still looking to make his hand. Bets 10,000. Merson says he is not a bracelet chaser. Prefers making money at cash games. He was in Macau most of this World Series chasing that cash. Merson now with Jacks up. It is the best hand, 25,000. I'm all in. I'm all in. Lopez re-raises all in. Wow. Lopez making a play here. Merson might appreciate. And don't try this at home unless you don't mind semi-bluff shoving against your mother. So now Merson wondering what this guy is up to. Well, for Greg to call here, it would be for just under 20% of his stack. Merson's certainly not going to give Lopez credit for having a tray in his hand. A nice pot for the taking, thinking Greg Merson here. He can recover if he's beat. I'm sure he's thinking that, too. He does make the call to put Lopez at risk. Greg ahead, but Lopez with a lot of outs. Yeah, Lopez with 16 ways out of this all-in jam. Terrific call there, though, by Merson. The champ knows what he's doing, except for the jersey. So Greg Merson in line to pick up this nice pot and knock off a player here late on day three. And the river card is the six of hearts, a winner for Lopez on the river as his flush comes in. We saw Merson in 2012 handle these beats matter-of-factly. With that double up, Lopez's stack a bit above average now. Merson still healthy, but that would have been a nice pot to have. Greg losing almost a quarter of his stack. Well, the result was not what Greg Merson wanted, but the call has to give him confidence. He was right up to, well, almost the end. Merson still with chips deep on day three. Back inside the Rio, where the recently departed Phil Helmuth has come back to talk to Mark Kroon, his buddy. I was in there. They asked me a lot of questions about you. I said nothing about the great, classy. I, I love uh, your place. Uh, they, they had stories about us playing in the old days. Yeah, they asked me. We t I talked a lot about all the, the charity stuff you did. And all yeah, stuff. We, we talked, talked about, about hospice care. And all that. that was, yeah. I thought it were, uh, I wish it had had a little better ending. I thought we were both good enough to find a favorite. Hey, if one of us makes it, that's enough. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, brother. Seems like you're in a good, good, good space right now. Yeah. With some free time on his hands, we thought Phil might want to look into some other career options. Sorry. The Rio said, hey, Phil, we'd like you to uh, go and run the poker valet. What's your last name? All right, now, what's your name? Help me uh, find where the spot is. The trickiest thing about the valet is you have to run fast to increase your tip size. 
So I happen to bring some shoes. I'll use them to be a valet. What's up, boys? Show me how to do it. Welcome to the Rio. Would you like From me to park your car? A dollar. Oh, that's OK. Uh, uh, any tip is great. Thank you. Well, good luck to you today. Yeah, yeah buddy. <laughs> I have a tip for you. You get to keep that. OK, 524. I have it marked. Mastering a new craft is always a pleasure. I have crashed a car in this parking lot before. How you doing? Pretty good. Can I park your car? Ooh, making money. I love it. I love it. All right, we're getting good at this. This job's not so bad. So where's the real money at? I ran as fast as I could. Look at this. There's VIPs here. It's Greg Merson, the reigning world champion. Ooh, $5 tip. Ooh, I like this. Let me get five back, actually. Good luck, guys. Oh my God, I have to park your car? This is the guy that beat me every pot today. This is so sick. Thank you. Good luck in there. Cheers. <laughs> Number 615, Elder. This isn't so hard. Are you guys waiting for a car? Please, Phil Helmuth parking cars? He can't even spell valet. <laughs> and what we didn't show is that none of those guys got their cars back because the poker brat crashed every single one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Max Steinberg and Phil Ivey with the most chips at this table, the featured table. Ivey is the under-the-gun player. Phil Ivey looking for bracelet number 10, main event number one. Pocket trays. A race to 7,500. One of Ivy's homes is in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. He has his own chef on staff there, like he can't make Honey Nut Cheerios on his own. <laughs> to Ola, looks down at Ace Queen. Not suited, but playable, unless your name is Norman Chad. <laughs> That's a call of 7,500. Steinberg with pocket tens. His twin brother Danny, also a fine poker player. You know, I prefer when Max is dressed to kill with a nice shirt and necktie. This is slumming it too much. World Series bracelet winner last year, shooting for his first main event cash. Calls from the cutoff. James Weeks suited 4-5 into the muck. Rabinovich folds to the big blind. Tony Gregg, queen eight of clubs. Getting 7-1 to one on a call here. He's a bargain hunter. And that's what he does. Four players will see this flop. This is an action table. Here's the flop, Trey, 10, ace, Steinberg with middle set, Ivy with bottom set. Greg missed, and he checks. Greg will be spared any bloodshed on this one, but that flop is the deadliest catch for Ivy. 16,000 is the bet with the three trays from Ivy. Ola now with top pair and a queen kicker, but only a 1% chance. Yeah, as usual, ace, queen in a heap of trouble here. This is the third straight year the amateur has played the main event. Ola putting some chips together. Ola with a raise to 41,000. Now Steinberg with way the best of it. What a great spot for Max. He's got to figure someone's got an ace or maybe someone has a spade draw. His decision here is whether to slow play or announce himself. Exactly. Does he want to clear the field or just kind of coax them along. It looks like he wants to jump. Yeah, it does indeed. Ivy bet 16,000. Ola raised it, and now Steinberg with the best hand just calls. Well, with that call, Max disguises his hand as either a draw or just an ace. Tony Gregg folded. Now Ivy with the set. And Ivy's got to be loving this spot, too. A set of threes is best here most of the time but not against the set of tens. Right now, Phil trying to size up a three bet here. It's tough enough playing heads up. You get a third player involved, and it makes things that much more difficult. Ola with the raise, Steinberg with the call. All in. Ivy announces all in. That I didn't expect. Oh my goodness. But Ivy wants to drive out any draws, or maybe he's overbetting here to make it look like he's just got a drawing hand trying to induce an ace to call him. Now Ola with top pair. Oh. The amateur has to know he's in over his head. And folds. I call. And of course, a call from Steinberg. I have a set. Ivy at risk and way behind. You got me covered, don't you? Yeah, he's got you covered. This is stunning. Ivy was cruising along 140 big blinds to begin the hand, and now he's staring at going bust. Only a one outer saves him. Sick. Hmm? Got psyched out for this part. This bad before. 
Ivy was thinking he'd be one of the chip leaders. Now he's hoping he doesn't have to get his car from Phil Hellmuth. The worst of beats. Turn card, five of spades, no good for Ivy. Ivy down to one card, and only one card saves him. He has to have the last tray in the deck, or his main event is over. Steinberg on the threshold of a monster knockout and nearly doubling up himself. The queen means the end of Phil Ivey in this main event. What a knockout have, uh, blow Max Steinberg uh, just delivered. I and I think Ivey is shell-shocked. As is everyone who witnessed it and all the players at this table. The main event can be cruel in an indiscriminate nature. Phil Ivey gone. Amazing. And Max Steinberg over one million is the new <laughs> chip leader. It's hard being you, huh? It's hard. Shut it's hard to stack all these chips, James. <laughs> Phil Mater and Ivy had a nice rivalry building. That's gone. The grinder now has the biggest stack in the room on his left. Ivy out in brutal fashion. Oh, I have a set. So many good things happened over grueling days of play and all wiped out in the matter of minutes. Tonight's bracelet moments are presented by PokerNews.com. Chad Holloway was the lucky Poker News journalist who won the Casino Employees event for nearly 85000 Maybe the achievement of my life to be validated with a bracelet as a player, not necessarily as a reporter. The 5K eight-handed No Limit Hold'em bracelet was awarded to Trevor Pope, who won the massive first prize of over half a million dollars. There's really no feeling to describe it. Like, I'm sure I'll set it eventually, but it's a very good feeling. Also winning nearly half a million was Charles Sylvester, champion of the 1K No Limit Hold'em re-entry event. I'm feeling great. Just won the bracelet. Uh, pretty, pretty fast hands up, heads up and uh, all my friends here uh, to share with me, so it's amazing. Past world champ Jonathan Duhamel in the middle of that winner's photo. 2001 world champ Carlos Mortensen on the left just turned top pair, top kicker, but he can't beat the king high straight held by Matthew Elsarelli, who just bet almost half the pot, and Carlos calls. All right, river card now. Carlos Mortensen drawing dead. Deuce of hearts on the river. That deuce changes nothing, Lon, as usual. Well, no card would be helpful to Carlos. He was already drawing dead. Thank you, Mr. Rain on my parade. <laughs> Jeez. Mortensen checked. Elsa Relly now. Says, maybe I can get 62,000 out of the former world champ. Carlos with top pair, top kicker. Getting three to one on a call here, which means if you're just right one out of three times in this spot, you're breaking even. Unless you're busting. Good point. And there is a call. And El Sorelli shows the best hand. And Carlos had to call off half his stack on the river. He's now down to under 20 big blinds. Yeah, Carlos is frustrated. He knew he didn't have the nuts, but did the board have to be that good for his opponent? A big blow to the Matador, who could not stay out of harm's way. Back to the Phil ivy -less featured table. Action on Ola. Under the gun with ace-five of clubs. And he says Ola to suited non-connectors. 8,000 is the raise. And it's time now for a new feature this World Series of Poker season. We call it White Magic with Phil Helmuth, a.k.a. What Would Phil Do? Tony Gregg, your one-drop champion, great player, but he has 91,000 this spot. That's 30 big blinds. The big blind is 3,000. I don't like to see someone risk 30 big blinds with ace-queen. It's just too easy to go broke out of a tournament. It's too much money. 30 big blinds is too much to put in. So I'd like to see him re-raise it maybe to five big blinds. That's 15,000. Maybe to six big blinds. That's 18,000. And then he has the option of folding if someone else shows super strength. Uh, why put your whole tournament on the line when you have a lot of time to work your chips. So with white magic each week, Phil will give his view of what a player should do in a particular spot. I'm not sure Greg is going to take advice from a guy who parked his car today. <laughs> Hold in. Well, Tony Gregg does decide to move all in. What a surprise, a respected young poker pro doing exactly the opposite of what the poker brat says. And it's pocket kings for Yuri Zivaleski. Those could have been Ivy's kings. 
No, I guess in this spot, Greg wanted to isolate the amateur Ola, but part of the risk here is someone else waking up with a big hand. Zivalewski, poker pro from Brazil. Yuri trying to sell a tough decision, perhaps hoping for more action behind him. And that is just a call for 91,000. Can he induce more action behind? Hudson folds a button. Mater in the small blind gives it up. Grinder in the big blind folds. So the question is, do I want to triple up or do I want to go home? What? Do I want to triple up or do I want to go home? You're not going to triple up if you call this. You're going to go home. Ola with a weak suited ace. You could triple up and go home too. Well, not immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Giving this a lot of thought. You leave tonight, come back in the morning. It's 91. All right. This is very sick. I don't even know why I'm thinking about this. We've seen Ola make some nice laydowns. This should be an easy one. Are the 49ers paying him for airtime? <laughs> you can get rid of it, Ola. I don't know why I'm thinking about this. What was that? <laughs> he does fall. That's why we're close. <laughs> it's, tri it's triple up or go home. Yeah, that's what I was scared of. Really? No, I don't mind the ace coin. They mock the poker bracket, but he knows of what he speaks. Tony Gregg now at risk and behind with ace queen. I would have called it with ace five heads up. All right, here's the flop. Gregg at risk. Four, tray eight, small board. Kings way ahead. And remember, Ola told the table he mucked an ace, so only two of them left to save Greg. Just don't put a juice out Turn card another eight, no help for Greg. Tony Greg has to have an ace, and an ace only, or he is wamboozled. The river card, the Jack of Diamonds, Zivalevsky picks up a very nice welcome gift and knocks out Tony Gregg. It's Gregg's turn to get his car back from the valet brat. <laughs> Zivalevsky with a very successful day three so far. You gain fortune to lose fame. Is it worth it? You gain fortune to lose fame. Was that worth it? <laughs> it will be a long walk back to the valet for Tony Gregg. Day three action has been fast and furious. We started today with more than 1,700 players. Now four levels in, less than 800 remain. Some of the notables that fell under the poker axe, 13-time World Series of Poker bracelet winner Phil Helmuth. We also lost Phil Ivey from our feature table in a set-over-set -set situation against Max Steinberg. And poker pro Jean-Robert Belland. He came in near the top of the chip stacks, but then ran kings into aces. Another player that people have been keeping their eye on is the current champ, Greg Merson. He's had kind of a roller coaster day. I spoke to him earlier, and he said that playing this year with all the extra media attention is actually a bit of a challenge for him. I've been watching and on every level break journalists are coming and whisking him away for interviews and he doesn't really get any break time except for when he's sitting at the table. Greg's table now the featured table here for the rest of the night. His story becoming one of the bigger ones here in 2013. And it seems like one of our live broadcast announce partners is out. Phil Galfon saying his farewell short of the money. Taking the last of Phil's chips, Canadian Mark Etienne McLaughlin, who inflates his stack to 664,000. He has two top 100 finishes in the last four main events. McLaughlin, good friends with 2010 main event champion Jonathan Duham. Elsewhere, the former featured table lineup, now an outer table, but we haven't forgotten about them. Phil Mater with pocket queens open for 11,000. To his immediate left, Grinder holding 10 deuce of clubs. 60. And true to himself, not folding, actually raising. And Mater four bets to 60,000 now. Well, earlier on day three, we saw Mizraki trying to push Mater around. Once again, Mater plays back at Mizraki, and the farmer should. He's got the better hand. And the grinder is caught fishing without a pole. Michael Mizraki makes his money trying to push players around, but he's getting pushed back. And the grinder shows one and folds. No, well, Mizraki showed a 10. Mater showed a queen. Queen beats a 10. <laughs> Farmer Phil over 300,000. Now slightly above the chip average in the room. That should be fine. Should be fine. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
just 684 remain late here on day three. 648 will make the money, so we're getting close to the money bubble. Good look at one-time chip leader Dick Van Lyke. Combination of some run good and some good play. Have him in the top ten. Van Lyke looking for his first World Series cash. Van Lyke was playing golf with his wife the morning of one of the day ones in the main event and thought, what the heck, let me give it a shot. The Antwerp Belgium resident started playing poker five years ago when he bought a home in Las Vegas. Van Lyke involved pre-flop with pocket tens, just re-raised Ogi Ravine to 33,000. Ravine, a Norwegian pro, way behind with 10-9 of spades. Ravine, 27 years old, cashed at a World Series event last year. So Van Lyke's four bet is called by Ravine. 72,000 in the pot. Van Lyke comes to Las Vegas every two months for a week or two. Years ago, he sold his medical-based company and now free to do whatever he wants. Here is the flop. Four, five, jack, one spade. Van Lyke still best. Ten to one favorite. He bets 30,000. Ravine flopped hot desert air. <laughs> he makes the call nonetheless. Designs is stealing this baby later, I guess. All right. The pot gets bigger. Turn card now. Another five, two pair now for Van Lyke. And when you get called, you start having second thoughts. 20,000 only this time. I'm sorry, did he just bet 20,000 into a pot of 132? He's one of the big stacks. He should act like it, for goodness sakes. Ravine drawing dead and dead. still reaching for chips. <laughs> and he raises to 50,000. See, you open the door for lunacy. You just crack that door open an inch, and the agromaniacs are going to storm the castle and try to steal all your castle flatware. <laughs> now Van Lyke, okay. trying to consider the validity of that raise, does make the call. Eight of hearts on the river. Well, now I would just check. Your hand has showdown value. Or maybe you can let Ravine bluff at it again, and then you make check. your decision. He does check, perhaps befuddled by Ravine's actions. And now Ravine bluffs at it for a hundred grand. Call. And a quick call from Van Lyke. Oh, he's got 10 high line. <laughs> and Ravine will have to hand it over. I think Van Lyke knew what he was doing there. I was the clueless one. It's a pair of tens and fives are good. <laughs> I keep the green chips. Oh my How God! How can you call that? Oh Ravine can't believe he was caught in the castle without a castle pass. I thought he had bigger than that. And Dick doesn't just like that bluff. He Van loves it, and the former chip leader is working to regain his lofty status. Tables continuing to break late here on day three. Players being moved to other tables, including Carlos Mortensen, one of three former main event champs still left in the field. The other pros have a great regard for Carlos. The 0-1 main event champ selectively aggressive and just picks his spots well. And on Carlos's left in the ball cap, the 0-6 main event runner-up Paul Wasica at that table. Back to our former featured table, pre-flop Max Steinberg re-raised to 30K with Ace King against Michael Mizraki, the original Razor holding. Please cover your children's ears. Five <laughs> tray off suit, but when Grinder puts chips in a pot, he's tough to get rid of, and he makes the call. Well, seeing Max here reminds me, Lon, I want to take the rest of the hand off to silently mourn the passing of Phil Ivey from this main event. Careful, sometimes when you leave, nobody notices. Good right. for you. Here's the flop. Seven, five, queen. There you go. Grinder gets the best of it with a pair of fives. He checks to Steinberg, who paid to take control of the flop. What I like about Max and his twin brother, Danny, they both say the other is better. Half the pot, 35,000 from Steinberg. I don't think Danny would have made that continuation bet there, and <laughs> I don't think Danny ever calls with Jack High. <laughs> don't start any family feuds. Ms. Rocky will tell you flatly he's a better player than any of his brothers. Grinder with the best hand. With bottom pair, he makes the call. Turn card now, another seven. Grinder now enjoys a four to one advantage with two pair. At the 2010 main event, Grinder was fifth. Brother Robert was 116th. Brother Danny was 345th. And brother Eric, 718th. All four brothers in the money. Call me when that happens again. <laughs> Small bet from Grinder, 25,000. 25 into a pot of 140. Do you really want two overs hanging around? You're giving Max Steinberg a sweet price to keep playing. About seven to one, and he's only a four to one dog. 
Grinder will rue the day he <laughs> made that bet, Lon. And as an aside, you notice when these guys are away from the lights of the feature table, they just look like regular poker players. A call from Steinberg. Grinder ruined it already. River card, eight of diamonds. Steinberg missed the entire way. And <laughs> Grinder is best. Okay, so the Grinder's not ruin anything. <laughs> Actually, he probably can start counting his chips up in this pot. He does check, happy with the size of the pot. Now Steinberg. He checks. Got a five. Yes, he did. Max Steinberg couldn't pull the trigger on a bluff there. Fives and sevens will scoop the pot of nearly 200,000 for Michael Mizraki. I'd like to be the grinder for a day, or frankly, Max Steinberg. A tremendously profitable day for Steinberg. For grinder, down slightly, but he is a survivor. Your chip leader going into day four will be 23-year-old Max Coleman of Wichita, Kansas. Well done, Max. And of course, if you're a chip leader under 30, you get standard issue iPhone earbuds. And how about the Octo Niners? Russell Thomas creating a nice story for himself on to day four. How come there hasn't been a rush of actuaries into the main event with this guy's success? Brad Ritchie, Alan Cunningham, Marcel Lusk survived the day, as did pro Melanie Wisner. And Dick Van Lyke is a lot closer to his first ever World Series cash. End of day three, just 666 players remain, only Max Coleman over a million. Max Steinberg in third, largely with Phil Ivy chips. He'd better use them wisely. Melanie Weisner now with some end of day thoughts. I played a great game today. I got absolute max value in a lot of spots where I feel like a lot of other people wouldn't have. I made a couple of really big laydowns and was shown I was right. So it's such a good feeling when like everything's kind of going your way card wise and you feel like you're playing to the utmost of your capabilities. So I really was pleased today. I had a great table and um, and I ran okay. So. In the set over set heard round the poker oh. world, Max I Steinberg call. announced call himself to the 2013 main event. Holy, you got me covered, don't you? Yeah. It's hard to stack all these chips, James. Ivy's fall headlined a day three that saw defending champ Greg Merson survive, but his close friend Tony Gregg falls short yeah, of the money. Awesome. Oh How can you call there? Oh my God. <laughs> no! Three days gone, four days till we have our November 9 next order of business, the money bubble. For Norman Chad and Kara Scott, I'm Lon McCarran. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.